let's uh, call to order our regular city council meeting for Monday, April the 20th, uh, 2020, uh, for our virtual meeting. It is currently 8 p.m., or 8.01 now, and we will be followed by our city council uh, budget work section. Having said that, if we could, would everyone please join in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the and republic, to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, uh, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mm -hmm. uh, City Clerk, could you verify for us that we do have a quorum? Okay. Council Member Estev? Council Member Estev? If you're on, please let me know. <laughs> Council Member Wolfley? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Boffo? Here. Mayor Adams? Here. Council Member Gardner? Council Member Gardner? Here. <laughs> Councilmember Harrison? Present. And Councilmember Ndebumalu? Present. Okay. I believe so far the only one that is not present is Councilmember Estev. Councilmember Estev is here, just okay. having mic issues. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, your mic is muted. Thank you so much. <laughs> no uh, problem. Any additions, deletions, or amendments to the agenda at this time? Okay, we will now move on to I I did not hear any correct. So moving on to citizen participation. Okay. So we have received 23 comments tonight. First one. This one is from Terry Glaze out of Grayson Lane. I'm writing to you regarding City of Bowie letter about replacing the trees in Grady's Walk. I know we lose a tree every now and then, but the beautiful canopy of trees is one of the reasons we chose to move to Grady's Walk. Please don't cut, don't cut down our beautiful trees and replace them with new small trees that will take years to mature. I encourage everyone voting to please take a drive through our neighborhood this week to enjoy the beautiful flowering trees. Grady's Walk is one of the most beautiful neighborhoods anywhere. Please don't take away our beautiful canopy. Thank you. Next one is from Cheryl Hicks. Hello, I was told by the treasurer of the Woodmore Highlands HOA that your offices are doing some unethical things with the budget on the ice arena. It was unfair in the first place that a decision was made for that facility without the full input of all residents. In Bowie, we already have an ice arena that is just fine. However, we also need a basketball facility. The existing one in Bowie Town Center is never available when we need it. We need another facility for all of the different teams in the area who participate in the Boys and Girls Club programs. Soccer, basketball, lacrosse, and track sports all need additional space to use that's indoors. It's so unfair the way this was voted. 
now more money is being put into this arena. I hope that with all the taxes that we pay in Bowie, that in the near future, you will find funds to build that basketball facility. As a longtime Bowie resident, I pray that every resident can have a say in what comes next. Thank you. Next one. To the mayor of Bowie, my name is Viola Under Underdue. I live in District 3. I'm not thrilled with the possibility that we have a proposed ice skate arena that is going to cost more than what we have in our city's budget. Additionally, it will not bring in enough revenues to maintain the ice skate arena. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that this will lead to a tax increase for the Bowie residents. It has also been stated on more than one occasion that the previous city council bended to the will of many outsiders that aren't Bowie residents. I also believe that we have a clear case of bait and switch. The residents were baited with an ice arena that included several sheets of ice and several basketball courts. However, when the contract was signed, the basketball courts were not included. The city council, in an effort to appease its angry residents, gave the residents an empty promise of an additional facility with courts. Meanwhile, we have this ice skate arena being built in my neighborhood to benefit mostly non buoy residents. That will not share in the tax burden nor the traffic congestion. I recommend that we halt the construction of the arena, conduct a study to determine if a multiplex sports center that has indoor swimming and basketball courts would be more beneficial to our residents and a better use of our tax dollars. Currently, we only have pools that require membership. We need a public pool for our residents. Thank you. Next one is from uh, Michael Dokes, a District 3 resident. Dear City of Bowie Mayor and City Council, I have been a resident of the City of Bowie for 24 years. I moved here because of the peaceful setting diverse population, and excellent services delivered by the city. I realized that settlement for my money that as a resident, I would be required to pay a special city tax in addition to that imposed by the state and the county. I was willing to do so for the amenities and services that came with the location. What I did not sign up for was to have my already high taxes increased to pay for a costly and unnecessary recreational facility for which there is no funding except through borrowing funding by way of issuing bonds. There are much greater priorities, in, in other words, schools, roadway improvements, senior housing, in the city than an ice skating ring. It is my understanding that the city council insists on pushing through funding for this project amid COVID-19 when the state and the county have made it clear that there will be significant funding cuts as a result of the economic fallout of this pandemic. Governor Hogan has made it clear that the state's rainy day fund is depleted and that there will be no new approved spending, such as the recently passed education initiative. Why in the world would our city council even consider new spending for an ice ring during this crisis? I thought we elected people that could be dependent upon to act judiciously and responsibly with taxpayer dollars. This is not the time to load on unfunded spending items to the city budget. The future is too uncertain given these times, which is being compared by some prominent economists to the Great Depression. I would encourage the council to not act carelessly with the economic health of the city and to instead act cautiously and conservatively. This is a time for common sense spending decisions and not a time for funding wish list items such as an ice skating ring. Next one is from David Oney. Dear Mayor Adam and Bowie City Council staffers, I am sending the email to voice, to voice my concerns over the construction of Ice Arena on Church Street. My name is David Oney. I am your neighbor and a concerned citizen of Bowie. Quick question, sir. I would like to know the economic importance of building an ice arena in our neighborhood 
and what we as church street dwellers stand to benefit in the long run. I am of the opinion that the proposed site would be converted into a recreational center or sports center that will benefit our kids and property owners in the community. I am all for developments in our community, but is has to be a smart investment. Sir, we need more social investment, which we are seriously lacking in Church Street. We need to be very strategic with our resources and invest taxpayers' money on projects that will benefit city dwellers. That being said, I would like Mayor Adams and city staffers to please reconsider this project by providing Church Street dwellers what they really need and how these investments can uplift our community. Next one is from Amy Bogan. To address the additional traffic on Church Road caused by the ice ring, please consider extending Church Road to 450 by the Lytle Grocery Store. This more direct route would bypass the curves and blind spots on Church Road near the Old Stage and Westview neighborhoods. The existing road would be used as a service road for those who live along Church Road in the neighborhoods off Church Road and the existing church. This would be the safest alternative. The next one is from Shani Bagley. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. My name is Shani Bagley and I reside in the old stage section of Bowie. I have reviewed the presentation that is planned for today's council meeting regarding the ice rink. And I am concerned about the direction budget implications and impacts to a potential courts facility. By my understanding, this, propo this proposes we spend 25% more on the project for a few months of off-season access to courts. This proposal, if accepted, would cost at least $5.5 million with minimal benefit for the courts community. In November 2018, the council heard a presentation on options for a new indoor courts facility. <clears throat> At least three of the options listed would give city residents access to year-round courts for less than the additional projected cost of this proposal. Why would we settle for off-season courts when year-round solutions are available at or near the same cost? Bowie residents and the courts community deserve better. Please, no more delays and no more votes on the buoy iceplex. This issue has been litigated for years already. The rink is under construction. You, Mayor Adams, and members of the council must collectively accept this decision and instead work to ensure the iceplex is a successful and thriving resource for buoy residents. You must also serve the buoy courts community and begin working in earnest to build a year-round courts facility facility. Okay. Next one is from Michael Brown. Good evening, Mayor Adams, council members and staff. After attending several meetings and speaking directly to the council concerning the dual ice rink project in Bowie, I find it insulting to discover that the approved county budget of 24.2 million for the dual ice rink has been increased to $28,682,800. I won't waste your time to list why this feels wrong on many levels. I don't believe the council cares at all for the concerns of the residents of District 3. The council appears to be completely on the side of the developers and the ice skating community. The entire state of Maryland is now in crisis with COVID-19 and a proposed increase is moving forward for this dual ice rink. There are other areas in Bowie that could surely benefit from this proposed increase for the dual ice rinks. Why is there an increase to what was previously approved? I'm still amazed at how our taxes will support this project that few people in District 3 wanted. District 3 is supporting a state-of-the-art ice facility for a majority of the supporters who don't live here because the old ring at Allen Pond has fallen, fallen into disrepair. I've never gotten an answer as to why the project had to be here. I also haven't heard what will be done for District 3. 
After attending hearings on this project, whenever the subject of basketball courts came up, after a few questions and statements, it seemed to just be something that would be discussed at a later, later date and then right back to the business at hand. Mm -hmm. Dual ice rings. If basketball courts are a toxic, toxic subject, then maybe an indoor swimming pool or tennis courts. Something for mm -hmm. District 3 for District 3 other than just appeasing the ICE community at our expense of traffic and taxes, to name a few things. I would also like to add that when an option was mentioned for basketball, volleyball, pickleball, and indoor soccer could occupy one ring in the off season, a local figure skating coach says in a publication that's not an option as the skaters train all year round. I sincerely hope the council is now taking that into account as to how this facility will be operated. Next one is from Michael Gorman, a resident of Althea Lane. And his is questions. How did this presentation come to the city? If the mayor did he contact MNCPPC directly? Did the council request that he contact the MNCPPC? If so, when? And in which council meeting? And was it a motion? Where did this presentation come from? Which organization authorized the presentation to be created? Who funded the presentation's creation? How long would it take to answer the questions or implied cost figures in the back of the presentation? Who would do the analysis? How would that be paid for? Has the Maryland MNCPPC agreed to reopen its capital improvements program budget to add, say, about 28 to $30 million? Is it the city council's intentions to pass a stop work motion? What are the costs to the city from the contractor for stopping the work? If yes, what has the city budgeted to defend against the lawsuit? The, contract, the contractor expenses to date are likely between $6 million and $9 million. How will this be paid? Has that money been put into the budget? Which council meeting conducted that hearing? What was the motion? When passed and who voted yes or no on the motion? The presentation pages 11 through 14 show that the original objective of the building will essentially be destroyed. There are no locker rooms, no snack bar, no stands for participants. Lowered income and a likely way too low cost increase of 25%, thus from $24 million to 30 plus million dollars. Next one is from Karen Williamson, a District 3 resident. To the Honorable Mayor Adams and Bowie Councilman, good afternoon. I am sending this email to serve as my citizens' participation concerns for the council meeting tonight, April 20th, 2020. I am a resident in District 3 of Bowie. I live in the Woodmore Highlands community. I am voicing my continued concerns for the development of the ice ring to be located at Church Road. There are a few major points I would like to address. The coronavirus and COVID-19 are going to be a major burden on the city of Bowie resources and its residents. To continue this development at this time is a true waste of the precious and very limited resources of our city. We should expect for our city and community to be hit with major financial impacts. 23 to $25 million has been allocated to an ice rink which probably can't be used anytime soon before there is some tested and proven virus vaccine. The Bowie City truly needs to enhance our citizen safety measures and responses given the impact that any virus or natural disaster could have on our area. We clearly need to refocus on this community. I am beginning to think that emails and websites of information are not enough. And not to be funny, no one would have ever would have ever considered finding and securing home paper products to be a community issue. Things like this and more need to be considered. We, we now know that panic is real. We need better plans and executions. 
Lastly, I continue to be concerned with if the ice rink development is to continue. This plan has never really served our community enough. Bowie City residents deserve to have recreational facilities that will be opened and used by our residents. We lack city pools, play areas, and sporting entertainment facility opportunities. Given that our community continues to grow and these types of venues need to be in planned transit area for easier access. Thank you for, re for reading my concerns and combining them into the scope of concerned citizens for our community. This one is from Joanne Marshall Hobbs. Good evening, Mayor Adams, council members, and city staff. My name is Joanne Marshall Hobbs, and I live in District 3 in Bowie. Thank you for your service to Bowie. I appreciate all that you do for the city and residents. I read on the Bowie Living blog that tonight's meeting will include a presentation about repurposing a portion of the new Bowie Iceplex for non-ice recreation uses. I am interested to hear how the proposal will address the expected traffic increase on Church Road and the dry court capacity issue. In the study that was conducted for a Bowie sports facility, 36.7% of the Bowie residents participated in basketball, ranking second only to swimming compared to ice hockey, whose participation from Bowie residents was 22% and ranked seventh. 75% of the residents were in favor of an indoor sports facility. As you are aware, Bowie is currently not meeting the dry court demands for various activities, basketball, pickleball, volleyball, etc. Adding dry courts would be beneficial to all Bowie residents, ranging from the youth to senior citizens. I am in favor of a dry court solution, and I respectfully request that you pursue including this option. Next one is from Narvel Hall, the resident of District 3, to the Mayor of Bowie and the City Council. Being a resident of Bowie for 22 years, I would like to highlight some concerns and issues I have concerning the proposed building of the new Bowie Ice Complex on Church Road. Funding. There is no city budget funding for this project, and money has to be borrowed via issuing bonds. Resident tax dollars could be spent more wisely for better and broader community needs. Priorities. I would wager that the majority of the Bowie residents would not consider this a priority. Higher needs are infrastructure, schools, smarter development, etc. Location. Church Road is currently challenged with increasing traffic. With ongoing and proposed new housing developments, it's being used more and more as a throughway to get to major highways leaving Bowie. Most of us are aware of the unfortunate fatal accident to one of the youth residents in this specific area. Current COVID-19 situation. As federal and state funding are taking a major hit due to coronavirus, now is the time to pause, be concerted, conservative, look at decisions made pre-COVID-19, and make necessary changes or adjustments to funding borrowing. Like the rest of citizens, companies are in all levels of government. In summary, I do not see the immediate need to build this ICE complex. The COVID-19 situation will definitely affect usage and possible events there. As mentioned above in my earlier entries, there are better ways to utilize citizens' tax dollars and higher priorities. Next one is from Isabel Pocquerel from the Huntington Heritage Society to Mayor Adams and Bowie City Council members. The Huntington Heritage Society submits the following addendum to our statement read at the City Council FY 2021 budget meeting held on April 13, 2020. With regard to the Bowie Heritage Trail project, we should have said that though we were happy to see some funding for the trail project covered in the proposed 2021 budget, we are, however, disappointed that you are not hearing us when we say we want to see full funding. We indicated in our statement at the Bowie listening session held at the Huntington Community Center 
on February 13th that this project has been in the making for almost 20 years. And phase two, the Railroad Museum Improvements Grace Fielder design is being pushed off by six years. This should not be. We know the permits are in hand and Fielder's plans are approved. All it takes now is to fund. The city of Bowie and the city council have shown support for our history and heritage and we greatly appreciate this. We would very much like for the city council to take this to its fruition and also fund this phase of project in the FY 2021 budget. Our railroad museum is a small gem. Let us add to its appeal with funding to complete the heritage trail. Thank you. The next one is from <coughs> Cornell Young. Good evening, City Council and Mayor Adams. My name is Cornell Young, and I am 27 years old from District 3 area. I have lived in Bowie, Maryland for the majority of my life. Building another basketball facility besides the Bowie City Gym was something I have always wanted to see done in Bowie, Maryland. However, I have yet to see that take place. I'm moving out of my parents' home to Upper Marlboro this summer, buying my first house, partially because I could not believe that the council was considering moving forward with the hockey sheets. One day I would like to move back to Bowie, but that depends surely on the outcome of this manner. Next one is from Lori Jones, the president of the Bowie Hockey Club. Dear Mayor and City Council members, prayers and best wishes to all to stay safe and healthy during this pandemic crisis. Bowie Hockey Club is excited to see the weekly progress pictures and construction updates on the Bowie Iceplex that Costello Construction and the Bowie Ice Arena provide to our members. The reality of two sheets of ice is finally here and Bowie Hockey Club looks forward to expanding our in-season programming and the ability to offer year-round ice options. While the multi-purpose sports complex is a nice afterthought, we can't stop or pause the construction of the new buoy iceplex. The current buoy ice arena is well past its useful life and any stoppage or pause on the new buoy iceplex construction will seriously jeopardize buoy hockey club's future growth. Buoy hockey club celebrates 50 years in 2021 and is one of the oldest youth hockey clubs in the district, Maryland and Virginia area. We look forward to another 50 years in our new home, the Bowie Iceplex. Bowie Hockey Club still supports the courts community receiving additional space for their winter programming, but in separate facilities, which will, in, will, which will adequately support their year round needs. The multi-purpose sports complex presentation is missing a price tag which I'm sure would be substantially more than the 25% budget increase stated. For the past seven years, as a Bowie Hockey Club member, I have participated in Bowie Iceplex discussions, and the one constant is that delays cost the city money. Please do not stop or pause the construction of the Bowie Iceplex. The hourly rates for ice are significantly more than dry floor rentals, and ice sports are a year-round sport. Thank you to the city clerk for reading this email and the city council for listening. Please stay safe and healthy. Next one is from Brian McCormick. Good evening, Mayor Adams and city council members. My name is Brian McCormick. I am from District 1. I'm sending this email due to my strong dislike of the city council potentially bringing another ice hockey arena to Bowie. With me being a 18-year Bowie resident and a 10-year Bowie High School graduate, I can attest to the fact that ice hockey sheets are not benefiting this community in no way, shape, or form. Instead, basketball courts would be in high demand. Reason being, over the last 15 years, the city of Bowie has had 108 of its youth male citizens go off to college to play basketball. This is an average of over seven students per year over the last 15 years. Going off to college because they were able to practice at facilities such as the Bowie City Gym. 
This number doesn't even include the numerous girls from the city of Bowie who have gone on to play collegiate basketball. With another facility, we can keep even more kids off the streets and help send more to college for free. Next one is from Gail, en uh, Gail Elkins, a resident of Dunwood Ridge Terrace. Dear Mayor Adams and Council Members, I write on behalf of the three members in my household to object to the construction of the iceplex on Church Road in District 3. Why not update the ice rink at Allen, Allen Pond? That would be a better use of taxpayer dollars as would be a recreation center, swimming pool, or health and fitness center. Please consider these options as opposed to the iceplex. Next one is from Brenda James, a District 3 resident. Good evening, Mayor Adams, council members, and staff. I am writing to request that the city of Bowie reconsider plans approved by the prior administration for the Iceplex. I believe we all agree that more recreational activities are needed in Bowie, but we need plans and actions that reflect what is appropriate for the citizens of Bowie. The Iceplex always had a low priority based on prior studies and will serve as a very small portion of our citizens. Please use the available funds for recreational activities such as swimming pools, courts, and indoor recreational activities. Do not make the Iceplex a financial burden to the citizens of Bowie. Give us the recreational activities that first benefit our youth and community. Next is from Justin Rim. Good evening, Mayor Adams and City Council members. My name is Justin Rim. I am 28 years old from the District 4 area. Basketball means a lot to the city of Bowie, Maryland. I have lived in Bowie, Maryland since I was 10 years old. For 15 years under my parents' roof and for three years I have lived on my own in Bowie. Yes, Bowie impressed me so much growing up, I decided to buy a house here because I wanted to raise my family here. However, I'm having second thoughts, solely because I noticed that my ever annual raising tax dollars are being used to fund an ice hockey facility that nobody in the community wants or desires. I have so many friends from Bowie who went on to play collegiate and we all over the years have said Bowie needs another recreation basketball facility. Kevin Durant is from Prince George's County and has used facilities such as Bowie Gym to hone in on his talent. He has co-produced a movie coming out called Basketball County in the Water, debuting on the Showtime Network on May 15, 2020. This documentary will talk about how Prince George's County has the most NBA players from one county for over a decade long. Some of those present NBA players being from Bowie, Maryland, such as Los Angeles Laker Quinn Cook, Denver Nugget Jeremy Grant, and Capital City Go-Go player Jeryan Grant. If this doesn't show that what the city of Bowie could do with two primary basketball courts, nothing will. And I will surely move to another city where they use our tax dollars on choices that make better, clear, obvious sense. Next one is from Kevin Mays. Good evening, Mayor Adams and city council members. My name is Kevin Mays. I am 26 years old from the District 1 area. This email has been written to speak about the ice hockey facility being constructed on Church Road. Due to me living in Bowie, Maryland for over 14 years, I have seen the importance of another basketball facility in Bowie. Growing up playing at the Bowie City Gym, I always had so much fun, but yet such a trivial time. We, we would have sometimes only two courts to play on at Bowie City Gym because of AAU tournaments and due to hundreds of kids being at the gym, which led to overcrowding. When I first saw the city was building a recreation center, I was excited. When I found out, however, it was primarily for ice hockey sheets, I was instantly filled with disappointment, confusion, and even regret for wanting to stay in Bowie because clearly ice hockey is not what the community desires. 
I hope this email finds everyone well and that the city council respects taxpayers' desires and needs for a basketball facility. Next one is from Nicole Bell. Good evening, Mayor Adams and city council members. My name is Nicole Bell. I am 27 years old from District 4. I'm sending this email in regard to the potential ice hockey facility being constructed on Church Road. I have lived in Bowie, Maryland for over 20 years, and I, I can attest to the fact that basketball is important to the Bowie community. I graduated from Bowie High School, class of 2010, and so many of the alumni from that class met originally at basketball courts, such as the Bowie City Gym. I grew up playing basketball myself, from playing with the Bowie Boys and Girls Club throughout elementary school to playing for Bowie Express AAU teams in middle school and high school, and also playing for the Bowie High School team. While playing basketball growing up, I often had to travel outside of our community to play at larger facilities. Including myself, a lot of my friends and fellow classmates felt that basketball was a huge part of our upbringing and has instilled hard work, discipline, <clears throat> and healthy competition into our lives. Many of those same friends obtained scholarships to play collegiate basketball and have come home to Bowie to give back by volunteering and coaching. Building a multifaceted sports facility with more basketball courts will continue to give the youth of our community more activities to do, athletic programs to participate in, and to learn so much about themselves through playing a game that they love. It can also allow an opportunity for more of the youth in Bowie to obtain scholarships for college. A large portion of our community would greatly benefit from new basketball facilities. Thank you for your time and consideration. Next one is from Millie Hall from District 3. Good evening, Mayor Adams, council members, and staff. My name is Millie Hall, and I've been a proud resident of Bowie, specifically District 3, for over 21 years. While I support smart growth economically within the city, the proposed Iceplex is highly concerning, as I believe this will severely impact the quality of life for the residents within the impacted area, instead of benefiting or enhancing the community as a whole. I'm primarily concerned that the current infrastructure will be unable to handle this type of undertaking the proposed scope of work requires. In addition, our state and nation are dealing with a global pandemic due to COVID-19, which has led to a statewide budget freeze on all non-essential spending. I would think that our city should follow suit, especially given the fact we do not know how long the current restrictions will last from a safety and economical standpoint. If this project should continue in the distant future, I strongly feel this facility should at least include and be shared with a multifunctional sports court. In previous surveys conducted within the community, many residents were more united and in favor of multifunctional sports courts serving as the most reasonable of new recreational amenities to be added in Bowie. I appreciate the opportunity to express my opinion and truly hope that the city takes into account the needs of all citizens of Bowie, which would include multifunctional sports courts. And the last one is from John McCoy. Good evening, City Council and Mayor Adams. My name is John McCoy. I am 27 years old from the District 3 area. I have lived in Bowie, Maryland for over 15 years. I'm presently in the process of buying a house in either Bowie or Upper Marlboro, but honestly, I'm trending towards Upper Marlboro because I can't believe the city is considering a facility for ice hockey or primary ice hockey usage. Over the years, I have never, ever, ever heard any youth say they wanted to go play ice hockey in Bowie. Every time, it's mainly them wanting to play basketball but having no facility to use because Bowie Gym is so booked all the time. Long story short, build a basketball gym. It's an obvious market for it. Thank you.
And that is all of them. Hey, thank you so very much to all of our constituents and the citizens of Bowie. And thank you, uh, City Clerk. I know that was a lot of reading. <laughs> no problem. So much. Okay, as we move along the agenda, I think we don't have any presentations or city uh, board and committee reports this evening. No, uh, sir. Uh, council announcements. I think the only thing we continue to say to everyone is please stay safe. We know this is a tough time for everyone. Uh, on that note, I think we can move to the city manager's report. Good evening, uh, city council, Ms. Mayor. The, uh, the, 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 uh, and the residents, of course, our, our, our employees continue to work vigilantly and, uh, and in a very conscientious fashion to uh, uh, in areas of public safety, public health. Mark, and, uh, we can't, Mark, we can't hear uh, Mr. Lott's microphone. No, it's, it's okay. No. Now, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I, what I wanted to say was that the, the, the residents, to the residents in the city council, that um, our employees are continuing to, uh, to, to keep us safe and sound during this pan pandemic. And both our police officers, our, our, our cellar waste, our public works work, workers, and all of our, our essential workers, our rangers, in spite of the, uh, of the pressures associated with this pandemic. And, uh, and we, we, we meet daily to discuss all the things associated with this crisis. And uh, our, our emergency manager has, got a, has connected with everyone. And we're gonna do all that we can to keep this, go, keep this up as long as this pandemic uh, uh, stays with us. Thank you. Thank you, city manager. At this point, I think we move into the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, move to approve the consent agenda. Second. I will. It's been moved and properly second, but I would like to make a comment at this point, and that being with uh, uh, R27-20, the resolution, uh, uh, about four or five years ago, I may have worked with CTC, so I will be abstaining from voting. Uh, uh, well, I will simply have my vote as an abstain. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, it's been moved and properly second uh, to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Reply by aye. saying aye. 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 Any Aye. nays? And one abstention myself. City Clerk, are you good? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to, I'm here to the new business approval of the letters to prince george's county and maryland national capital park and planning uh, mr mayor i would like to make an amendment to the language uh, that's going to uh the county for the cip program um in the church road section as we've just all heard church road is uh, a well-traveled road in district three um but obviously has a lot of issues with um, and there's an S curve in that area, which we own about six acres of land around that area. And I'd like the language to be a little bit more specific about the city donating six acres um, of land to the county that we can get um, a little bit more movement in the CIP process for fixing that dangerous S curve on Church Road.
Thank you. Any any comments? Was that a motion by you? Yes, sir. I did not hear a second. Is there no second? A second. Okay, it's been moved and properly second. Uh, any discussion? Adrian, this is Michael. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, yeah. sorry about that. I, there's a really intense echo. I don't know if it's just me or what, but there's a really intense echo. In very plain language, can you just repeat what you're moving to do? Just want to be clear. Yeah, so in the church road section of the um, document, it talks about transportation. Mm -hmm. um, currently, we're at year six in terms of the county uh, helping to fix that S-curve. What I want to do is make a bigger movement from the city, and our language is kind of vague right now, make a bigger move to say, essentially, we will donate the land on Church Road, that, that six acres of land around that Church Road park that we own, to kind of make a good faith effort of saying we are becoming a more willing participant in um, seeing Church Road, uh, especially that S-curve, be, um, uh, be fixed. Um, I think we've also talked about it offline in our, um, our legislative dinner with our county and state folks. I think this will be a, a good move to make happen. I'm 100% fine with that. Anything to accelerate the church road work. Um, do we know what land this is exactly? I'm just curious. Uh, I think Dan can speak a little bit more to it if folks have questions. Yeah, I just want to know what the land is that we're offering to donate here. It, the uh, land is a uh, city-owned uh, property, uh, part of a park. It is directly to the west of uh, Church Road, sort of tucked in uh, the, the S-curve portion. It's uh, currently just uh, forest and woods, not utilized by the city. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, I have a question of staff. Michael, thank you. Thank you, Council Member at staff for your question, because that was one of my concerns as well. Um, my question to staff, the land that the city is, well, I'm sorry, the land that Council Member Brawful is uh, proposing to contribute or donate, will this land be built upon for the road? Will the road work go on this parcel of land? Yes, the land would go up on this portion of road. Uh, of land, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. And I just want to be clear, Dan, you're saying that the land is just west of Church Road? That's correct. Okay. And it's just woods. So is it, it's at the northern portion of the S then? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, I see what you're talking about. That sounds great. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, I have no further discussion since it's been moved and properly second. Uh, all in favor of the motion, um, respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed with nay. I believe the motion carries. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the uh, CIP letter to the count with amendments. Seconded. It's been moved and properly seconded to approve the letters with the amendments. Any discussion? If none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, if I may, uh, for those who are on uh, Teams at a remote site, we'd like to make a request that uh, you not use the mute all button uh, on your uh, device. When you do that, you are knocking out the mics uh, within the council chamber. So please do not use the mute all button. Thank you. Hey, 
thank you. I think that brings us to the point in the agenda. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Alvin McNeil with uh, Maryland Park and Planning with us this evening. Mr. McNeil, I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, for, for those who may have a idea of what's going on is that uh, before this pandemic, uh, definitely, uh, the city council uh, decided to ask Park and Planning to take a look at our ice play and see how we might be able to work together. Uh, the city council agreed to have city staff provide them with the required information they needed uh, to develop some ideas. Uh, I'd like to say thank you at this time to city staff for providing the required information to Maryland National Capital Park and Planning. Now, one of the things that I think that makes us all very proud uh, is the, the compassion our parents have for all of our children. Uh, no matter what sports our children play, be it lacrosse, soccer, ice skating, ice hockey, baseball, basketball, volleyball, and the list goes on. The overwhelming majority of our parents support all of our children. And having said that, uh, again, I would like to thank uh, Mr. McNeil and Park and Planning for all their time and effort. And I really look forward to your presentation this evening. Please go right ahead. Okay. <clears throat> thank you. Mr. Mayor and other members of the council, it is a real pleasure to join you this evening to talk about a potential partnership that we believe will be beneficial not only to the Park and Planning Commission, but also to the city of Bowie. Uh, I am joined, I believe, uh, this evening by our new director of the Department of Parks and Recreation, Mr. Bill Tyler, if he's still on. And I, I am. Well, Good thank evening, you, all. Yeah. Uh, and what I would like to do, and I, I understand that the city is in the midst of uh, budget uh, considerations, and so are we. Um, so I'll, we will be as efficient, I'll be as efficient as possible in advancing this uh, potential partnership that we have had an opportunity to talk about with a number of individuals internal to our organization. Let me just say that it started, this didn't start in the last few months. It actually started back in 19, I'm sorry, 2013, going too far back here. 2013 with the formulation of our comprehensive master plan. And one of the elements of that comprehensive master plan was to identify areas within the county that had deficiencies in indoor recreation space, as well as aquatic space and outdoor space. And we did that, for those of you who may be familiar with the plan, uh, we created nine different service areas throughout the county. And within those service areas, we made certain assumptions in terms of what type of programming and facilities should be made available to individuals now and into the future. And our future was defined in terms of the 2040 uh, master plan. Uh, one of the areas that emerged was the, what we call area three, and area three includes the city of, most of the uh, corporate boundary of the city of Bowie uh, and some areas that are in the, in, in the county. Um, and this area has a deficiency and had a deficiency in terms of indoor recreation space. Uh, that deficiency was quantified by the staff uh, to be roughly about a hundred and a little over a hundred thousand square feet of uh, indoor recreation space. Um, and in comparison to other areas in the county, it loomed large and it still looms large. And one of the ways in which we have addressed 
deficits throughout the county is to really change the way in which we provide recreational services to our residents now and into the future. And some of you may have heard about the construction of multi-generational community centers, which is a new model that we have introduced uh, through the planning process. And our first facility that was built from ground up was a facility that opened last month in Brandywine, the SORC uh, facility. It's a facility of about 75,000 square feet um, in comparison to other recreational facilities that we've built. Uh, this is about twice the size. In, in some instances, three times the size of our typical community centers. And the, that facility in and of itself represented a major philosophical shift for us in terms of the way in which we provide recreational services. It was a shift from providing uh, facilities, smaller facilities that literally catered to a certain age cohort to more of a family experience. And that's what this these larger facilities have allowed us to do, to provide a variety of different programs that would cater to an entire family. We have recognized that the cost of building these facilities is such that it would not allow us to build these facilities all at once. And, and again, we're talking about nine different facilities that would be needed, some of which would be built from the ground up. Others would be modifying the, some existing facilities that we have. And <clears throat> one of the areas was area three, and again, that includes the buoy area. So we have been looking for some time at opportunities to provide indoor recreational space. And the Bowie Ice Rink presented what we consider to be an opportunity to kind of think about it not just as a facility serving our residents within Bowie, but also as a regional facility. And in that context, we asked our consultant to take a look at the facility to really look at it in terms of what opportunities existed for partnership. So the PowerPoint that you have in, in hopefully in some cases in front of you and others that you can see on the video is really uh, reflecting the work that we've done over the last uh, few months to begin to look at how the ice rink could be used more than just an ice rink, but to offer other opportunities that the commission along with the city could program for a variety of different ex recreational experiences. So, and I'll walk through this fairly quickly because I would imagine that you have a number of questions. Uh, I was, it, it really was actually helpful to hear some of the comments from the public because in many ways, uh, their concerns were concerns that we have had uh, and concerns that we have tried to address through some of the work that we've done. So that the phase three uh, essentially says, and by the way, this is an idealized presentation. It's not a uh, presentation that focuses just on the uh, buoy ice rink. In fact, the plans for the buoy ice rink are not even incorporated here. This is an idealized way in which a facility with two sheets of ice could be modified so that it serves the demand that's created by the skating ice skaters as well as the demand that's for other types of experiences, mostly a uh, court uh, experiences. And we drew from our work on the Tucker Road ice rink. We're building a facility 
that's very similar to the facility that you're building. So we were able to pull from the knowledge that we had generated over a couple of years as to what that facility would look and feel like as we go forward. Uh, these are not facilities that would necessarily generate good cost recovery, but there are some opportunities to enhance the potential cost recovery uh, from these facilities. And one of those ways is through looking at them as serving a variety of purposes. So the first slide that you see here is indicating that one, again, assuming two sheets of ice, one sheet of ice would remain as an exclusive ice rink and the other sheet we looked at in terms of how could it be serve a multitude of purposes. So if we go to the next slide, what we've done is, <clears throat> by the way, even though we're showing two slides here, we're really talking about just, the, if you will, the second sheet of ice. The first sheet of ice would remain um, it, intact. But for the second sheet, we're saying, why not look at an opportunity to make sure that other different other sports can also occur on uh, this facility. So the first it, to your extreme left is showing uh, multi-game courts, basketball, volleyball, and pickleball. In the center, we go to a multi-game courts with soccer, batting cages, indoor baseball, and then towards the right, we're showing how this one sheet of ice can be divided into two uh, high school uh, level basketball courts and also retain a practice ice rink, if you will, but it would be synthetic ice as opposed to regular ice. On the next slide, um, we're saying, okay, let's look at potential dry floor use. And again, we're laying out the variety of different uses that could take place. Uh, again, a dry uh, facility. Next. <clears throat> and we wanted to just show you how this could work. And one of the ways of illustrating that is to show you the different uh, sizes of courts, what's required uh, to accommodate different sports. And that's what this slide is showing you. Next. <clears throat> and we again, taking even a deeper dive, this deeper dive is to say, okay, what are the dimensions? And, the, and as I indicated earlier, we're looking at a high school uh, level court and how that could fit on this sheet of ice. It, next. And height and storage considerations. Uh, we're saying that if indeed one is supportive of a multi-use of this sheet of ice, there are some storage considerations that you would have to uh, address in some fashion in your redesign. Next. And technical consideration, we wanted to give you a full comprehensive view of what what items would have to be considered if we were again talking about converting that second sheet to multi-use uh, facility. Next. Then there's opportunities to generate some revenue. Uh, and we said, okay, what are they? We had conversations with the uh, some public entities that operate uh, ice rinks in uh, St. Louis and a couple of other locations. And we've also, I should mention earlier, we've visited local 
uh, facilities. Uh, the Gardens Ice House, of course, is in Laurel, but we've also had an opportunity to spend some time in uh, St. Mary's County to look at their uh, facility. And in both instances, they are following the model that we're presenting here, where this, they are using one of their uh, sheets of ice as a multi-use uh, type of facility. Next. And this is a, just the schedule and the cost impacts. And obviously, we would have to have a much more detailed uh, discussion uh, with the with the city, with the city manager, and others in terms of the the schedule and the cost impacts. Uh, from our view, as uh, they these impacts are not as substantial as as one would would think they would be. Uh, next, and construction line items. Uh, what will be some budget considerations? Um, next. <clears throat> And what we try to do in, with this slide is to begin to talk a little bit about what the uh, budget impacts would be for various categories. Next. And these are the alternatives. In, in many ways, what I, this slide is speaking to is that the Park and Planning Commission, uh, we can go to the next slide, and then we started developing some pros and cons uh, to this multi-use of the second sheet of ice. And I keep emphasizing that we're saying one sheet would remain intact and the second sheet would be of a multi-use uh, facility. And um, the last slide is just the questions uh, slide. And <clears throat> let me end with a few things. One is that we're not coming to you asking for any money at this point. Uh, we believe that there is an opportunity to take advantage of a, a, a monies that are flow from a state uh, instrument. Uh, we're not coming to you asking you to stop construction of the facility. Uh, the facility can continue on. I think you can look at it in two ways. If you move forward and build the two sheets of ice as is planned, we still would want to enter into a partnership with the city so that we have uh, some time that we could uh, allocate to for public access to the facility. If we are successful in getting you to agree to a multi-use of that second sheet of ice, uh, obviously, our position becomes a little bit more substantial and our participation becomes more, more substantial as well. Um, we think that it would improve the overall cost recovery of the facility. And in fact, we, we know that it will think would uh, improve the cost recovery. And at this point, what we are asking or is the support of the mayor and council to allow us to enter into some discussions with you, with the city council, or I'm sorry, with the city manager, um, to really begin to take a much deeper dive into uh, what is being proposed, how it would be impacted if we were to move forward with these alternatives that we are proposing and uh, come back to you with some uh, some a uh, cost that uh, had been informed by th those conversations that we would be having uh, with the city manager. The process would involve a, an MOU or a joint use agreement that we would enter into with the city and probably with the state because we would be using state money uh, to make any modifications that you would agree to. And um, and just in terms of laying out responsibilities, what you would be responsible for as we move forward, 
versus what the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission would, would uh, take on as a responsibility. The timing or the, my presentation is such that we can include this in our capital improvement for, uh, budget, which we would have to do um, as it goes forward and it has to be approved by the council in the early part of May. I'm sorry, uh, June 1st is the drop dead uh, date, but it, in May, early May, is when some considerations would be made by the county council. So that is, that's my presentation pretty much. I'm available for any, responding to any questions that you may have. If we could, I'd like to, at this point, uh, defer to uh, the Mayor Pro Tem since the ice rink is in District 3, if he has any questions. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and Mr. McNeil, Mr. Tyler, I, I appreciate you guys giving this presentation as well. Um, as you heard um, from uh, the citizen participation, there are folks in District 3 who feel very strongly about this ice rink, right? Um, there are folks who have been affected by Church Road and um, in various ways, and so this is a really key and integral part. Um, so I spent the greater half of this weekend really talking to uh, constituents, um, reading emails and getting a litany of questions. Um, and our district is in a, in a unique place. Right? You have people like Ms. Uh, uh, Bagley who, you know, support the ice ring and people like uh, Ms. Adams who has been a, uh, Carrie Adams who has been a fierce advocate for courts um, in our county. So. Um, I will begin my questions and then let my colleagues uh, take on from there. So there's one thing that you said that I, uh, I find quite interesting. So you did say that, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. McNeil, that this would have to be kind of decided um, by June, right? We're talking about getting this in, getting CIP money from the county. We would need to have some level of a decision by June. Am I correct in that estimation? Yeah, what, I, what I'm saying is it would be desirable to include it in our capital improvement uh, program. Uh, the way in which the funding would work, the, the state instrument that I referred to earlier would work, is that this, the city could independently uh, go forward without our uh, support. Or it could be a joint effort with the city in the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission and, and, uh, going and, forward. But in any event, whenever any county money is spent on a project, it has to go through our uh, capital improvement program. It has to be approved by the county council okay. and the county executive. And, and as we talk about a joint effort with the county, with the state in terms of usage, um, what does that look like, right? I mean, we've put up some bond money, we have some construction um, preliminary going on. We've been in these discussions since the previous council. What does that look like in terms of time allocated and how have you seen it done in the past, right? One of the biggest concerns for people in District 3 are going to be, can everyone from the county kind of come in and use this at any single time? What is that lineage of time and dictation of time for this uh, rink and the multiplex, right? Because that's something that can affect both our ICE folks and folks. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I I believe, uh, Council Member, that is something that we would negotiate with you in the, in the city. Uh, in other relationships that we have this type, we start with the the entity that owns the facility. You would own the facility. We'd be buying either you know time uh, for public access to the facility to use the facility, or, or for training purposes, for programming purposes, we define all of those things in the in the MOU relationship okay. with you. Right, you um, control that. We did, we don't. Sounds good. Um, you're confirming that there's no extra cost, right? You know, you, we're not going to be responsible for anything additional than what we've already put up for this there's project. No capital cost at all. Okay. Um, and then when it comes to current management and staffing, how would, how would this MOU affect it, right? We do have a core group of people, especially on the ICE side, um, who have been working with us for some years. How, how will that affect uh, kind of our staffing model? 
Yeah, yeah a couple of things. I, I would have to uh, have that discussion with the city manager and, and whomever you assign to manage the project. I, I don't know enough about it to respond to that question. Uh, if it's a situation where the city is operating the facility itself, then we would be negotiating with, with you. But if you have a third party operating the facility, which I would imagine you probably would, <laughs> um, then that negotiation would be with the city as well as that third party in terms of timing, the cost, et cetera. Okay. Now, initially, as we spoke about, I think as the last council, not, let me not say we, as the last council spoke about the the ice ring um, and its ROI, um, it looked like it was going to be fairly positive for the city in terms of the money put, being put up. Um, how does this kind of affect the revenue pro projections? I mean, this is a, a, a kind of a... Um, a joint uh, use at that point, although ROI probably will be higher because we're using it for a multitude of things. Um, how does that really affect the projections in that sense? Do you expect to take I have it? Not, what I've it? not seen your projections okay. at all. So I don't know uh, what your projections are showing. I can tell you based on my experience with our facilities, we operate uh, three uh, ice rinks or we did, uh, the Tucker Road ice rink, as you probably know, was destroyed by a fire about two years ago. And the uh, Garden out Ice House is actually operated by a private vendor. But in a sense, we still kind of oversee three different um, ice rinks. And I can tell you that the, the uh, cost recovery, the uh, ROI on those is pretty slim. I mean, it's in the neighborhood of about 34 to 40%. Uh, what we're saying essentially is that if, if you're comfortable operating at that level, uh, we, uh, our relationship with you probably would not change that substantially. On the other hand, if we're, if you're interested or willing to make certain improvements such as the ones that I have sketched out making it more of a multi-use facility then we believe there are some opportunities to enhance potential revenue and, uh, to the facility and improve that overall ROI okay it's not That's going to be a hundred percent but I would imagine that we're talking of 25 to 30 percent increase in the ROI okay um, and last last question. Um, how will this affect the availability on uh, of ice time during the summer? And also just from a county-wide standpoint, right, because this will be entering into an MOU with you guys, how has um, the demand for a court shifted in the county, right? I, I think I heard one resident say you, you do have your Quinn Cooks and your KDs who have come out of here. And so there is an inspiration of basketball and courts in our, in our community. But how have you seen the demand for courts grow, and how will a proposal like this affect the ice time uh, during summer use? Yeah, you know, the way in which we looked at it, it, it and you uh, go back and visit the presentation, we looked at it in terms of seasonal, uh, seasonal kind of approach to it. And we're, we are essentially saying that uh, the court use would be an off-season uh, use. So that that's less of an impact than it would be if we were talking all year round. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you again, Mr. McNeil and Mr. Tyler. Um, for the work you're doing here. Obviously, uh, this is a conversation that we're going to have to take very seriously as we try to find options that really uh, fit the whole need of our community. Um, but I yield the rest of my time, Mr. Mayor. Hey, thank you. Any other council members or questions? Uh, yes, this is Council Member Gardner, but I'll, I'll wait until others have uh, gone through their questioning. <clears throat> Uh, yes, this is um, Ingrid Harrison. Um, Mr. McNeil, thank you very much for your presentation. I do have a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned that um, you all have been working for years to address concerns in Area 3, which includes the city of Bowie. And I was wondering what work have you done to address those concerns so far? It's just a, our uh, focus has been on the ways in which we speak to deficits. Um, our uh, 2013 master plan 
uh, looked at aquatic space, non-aquatic space, as well as uh, enhancements to some of the community centers that serve uh, that the area, uh, which is area three. And the Glendale Community Center has been identified as an area that could potentially be expanded into a multi-generational center. And what have we done? We've acquired I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not, I can't hear you. Getting a lot of echo and feedback. Mr. McNeil, check your mute, your mute button, please. Can't hear you. Ah, uh, great. Hold on. Just unmuted those guys. You're not muted. Uh, can you hear me now? What happened? Come on. Mr. McNeil, we can't hear you. you right now. It looks like um may have been muted. Oh, well, dear, is there anything we can do to help him with that? It won't. Somebody must have muted it, but it doesn't give me permission to unmute him. Can you guys un... We may want to suggest for him to just log off and then log back on. Uh, Mr. McNeil? Uh, we still can't hear you. Uh, one of the councilmen suggested maybe you log off and then just log right back on. And thank you, everyone, for your patience. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes. Oh, okay. So the, the council member was asking me what have we done in terms of addressing the deficit uh, in uh, area three, and what I was about what I was saying is that we've done a, a variety of we've taken a variety of actions. Uh, there are five, I believe, four five community centers that we maintain that provide services direct services to the uh, area three. And each one is being looked at in terms of enhancement and upgrading, but more importantly, the Glendale, the Glendale uh, Community Center is the one location that's been identified as uh, where it's feasible to upgrade it to a multi-generational center. And in that connection, we've acquired additional property so that in the future uh, that el that facility can be expanded into a multi-generational center okay mm -hmm. um thank you and um your presentation you, you list no numbers but you stated um while you were going through the slides that the cost wouldn't be substantial so what are you basing that on i'm just basing it on our experience with the Tucker Road Center. As I indicated, we haven't seen your budget numbers at all. <laughs> Excuse me. And that's one of the things that we would do in our discussions with the city manager to actually dig into the numbers and get a better sense of the timing and your schedule and all of those things. We didn't want to take that act. Well, first of all, we wanted to make sure that you were in support <laughs> of us moving forward with developing a potential MOU with the city. So we didn't want to be, you make any assumptions before we had the opportunity to speak with you and, and the, well, the mayor, the council, and obviously the, the uh, council, our county, county council as well. 
Okay, I understand you're not making any assumptions, but you already have numbers for all the other projects that you've done. So you mentioned that there were projects that look like what we're trying to do, and they're following the same model. So how come we can't see revenue numbers for those? I, I believe what I was saying is I speculated in terms of the cost, and that's where the 25% uh, came from. But I, I can't give you precise uh, you mean in terms of uh, how much money would be generated? I can't. That's not the nature of what we've done. What we've done is to look at it from the standpoint of physically can the facility accommodate the kind of improvements that we're talking about. We have not gotten into the fiscal impact analysis at all. And I'm not talking about the fiscal impact specifically for what what this will, will bring, I'm just asking to see some numbers from some of the facilities that are following this particular model. Oh, we can, I can, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. Uh, if, if you're asking me what those facilities cost, we may have some of that information that we could generate. I don't have it right off the top of my head. Okay. Um, you also mentioned in uh, um, when um, Mayor Pro Tem Buafa was asking a question, um, there was some talk of this not really um, uh, adding additional cost to the project. Was that what I heard? Capital cost. Right. That's what I was saying. Okay. No additional capital cost. Right. Okay. And um, what exactly does that mean? It means that we would be using a, a different financial source to pay for it, it would come from the park, from the, an instrument with the state of Maryland. So the additional um, items that you list here with all the budget estimate percentages, that to me looks like an additional, you know, could be an additional 10 or $12 million, that's gonna come from a different instrument from the state? Yeah, we, my speculation is a guess, was that we're talking about a 20, 25% increase from your budgeted amount. So we're talking 25% of the uh, 21 million, I believe. So it's, we probably are saying that it would be up to uh, 5 million. Okay, what, I'm sorry, 5 million for what specifically? I, my problem, what I was saying is that our, my best guess, based on our experience, was that the costs for the improvements, that's assuming that all of the things that I laid out in terms of converting one sheet of ice to a multi-use facility would be somewhere in the range of about 25% of your budget. That's what it would cost. And it's, a, again, it's the best projection that I can make at this time because we haven't seen your schedule or, or particulars of your project. Okay. I, I mean, I guess I, I just have a concern. I, I'm sure you heard the concerns of our residents um, from the letters and the major concern mm -hmm. is the cost factor. And now we're saying that we're going to go back to the state to ask for additional money to perhaps do something different with what we've already proposed with the ice rink. And that would thus increase the cost. And the state may not even have that money based on this epidemic that we're going through to provide the, the, the funds for that. Is, is that um, kind of well, what you're saying? Well, we don't, I don't know and can't tell you how much, again, it's going to actually cost. I know that we have a, a, it's a reserve fund that's specific for Prince George's County. And I don't know how much of that will be uh, needed to pay for these improvements, depending on the nature of the improvements. Okay. So I just, I just want to put it out there publicly. I guess I, my concern is making additional, making improvements to something that we have and asking for additional funds from the state, which they may not have to do something that, um, you know, to make additional um, 
upgrades to a facility, thus increasing the cost overall. Um, so um, outside of that, my last question is, you mentioned a, a more substantial par uh, participation from uh, parks and plan park and planning. And what, what does that look like? What does more substantial participation look like? You know, what I was saying is that if, if you move forward with the facility as currently planned, what we would be uh, entering into, if it's desirable on your part, is an MOU to use the ice rink itself or both ice rinks at some point in time. If one of the facilities converted to a multi-use facility, you're talking about not only opportunities to do ice skating, but also opportunities for basketball courts, uh, baseball, tennis, a variety of other sports that could take place on that, on, on that uh, sheet of ice. So as a result, our relationship with you would be much larger and broader because we would have an opportunity to teach and train more sports. That's what I was saying. Right, and, and just need to make it clear that each year we would have to take up that wood and, and put the ice back down, correct? That's kind of what your proposal was, was saying, that we'd have yes, to put the tips the seasonal. Of if it, right. it's seasonal that is correct so labor intensive removal and reinstallation of dasher boards and flooring twice a year so we'd also have to include those costs on top of everything else every year correct that's the operating that's correct okay mm -hmm. thank you very much that's uh, all the questions i have sure mr mayor i have a couple questions Go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Mr. McNeil, for uh, being with us here this evening, uh, albeit virtually and not uh, in chambers. We look forward to seeing you in person sometime in the future. Uh, we certainly appreciate the time and energy you've put into uh, uh, the proposal so far. Uh, clearly, you guys have uh, both the knowledge and the time spent on this, and that's uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, I want to tap into that knowledge for a little bit, if I could. Um, you mentioned Tucker Road. Uh, the status of that is it's coming online fairly soon, right? I think at the end of this year, is that correct? Uh, yes, substantial completion is the end of this year. That's correct. Wonderful. And how many sheets of ice are there? There'll be one sheet of ice, but the facility is being designed so that the second sheet could be made of, it could be built because all of the facilities will be in place. We, we are essentially including all of the infrastructure for a second sheet. We just didn't have the funding to do our second sheet. Gotcha. Now, did you think there was demand for a second sheet or is it just purely a funding? Uh, we didn't have, we didn't see the demand either, but it was funding mainly. Okay. So, um, one of the things that uh, I find interesting is this notion of, uh, of switching back and forth. Uh, to me, that seems like uh, I don't get the full uh, bang for my buck in terms of, I think, what uh, um, Councilman Harrison was saying was uh, uh, um, that we have a tear down, put up type of, uh, of burden. What would the uh, what would the, the, the math or the usability look like if it was one sheet of ice 100% uh, of the time with quartz 100% of the time? Do you think your utilization would be better? Uh, well, I, in the speculation on my part, I don't know the industry as, as well as a number of other individuals. However, I can tell you that the experience at Capital Ice Rink in um, Charles County, I think I may have said St. Mary's County, it's in Charles County, is that uh, they had to convert to a multi-use of the facility. And I think what uh, the council member Harrison and, and what you're, you're thinking about, 
it's not it's done so so efficiently that quite frankly you don't even after a couple of the years that changeover occurs almost literally within an overnight i mean i've seen it done if you go down and actually see it taking place it's not a labor it's a labor intensive process but it's done with so much efficiency that it's done like oh you know within a blip Gotcha. So it, it then really is not an issue of um, cost or, or, or um, timing. It's really a question then of utilization because at the same time that ice may be popular in the winter, you also look to have a lot of people interested in basketball indoors. And I see that kind of as the, uh, the proposal where you have a lot of people who are interested in playing indoor basketball and other indoor sports as well. At the same time, uh, in effect, you have two peaks that are competing against each other and that uh, I think we might be shortchanging uh, the other sports if we only have them available for part of the year. Uh, do you have any insights on to kind of that split? It, it's, I think it's just hard. It's hard for me to speculate uh, because I know it varies depending on location. Mm -hmm. You know, if you speak to the the owners of the gardens, uh, ice house house, I'm oh, getting tongue tied. Uh, it's a very different dynamic there than it is at Wells Linson, where we operate a facility, or Tucker Road for that matter. So it, it's it varies, and and it would be purely speculation on my part. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I, I certainly do think we ought to uh, continue having conversations and, and you know, uh, uh, you know, the brainstorming and the thought process behind what you put together, I find uh, quite interesting. Um, I am uh, still troubled by uh, obviously the overall expense for our, our, our community and uh, the um, ambiguity. Uh, that exists in the uh, in the residence as to the to the value of it in its current configuration. Uh, so I, I appreciate the the work that you've done here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is Councilmember Gardner. I like uh, to chime in, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yes. Uh, but I put it. Oh, okay. And I want to say thank you to Mr. McNeil for giving such a presentation this evening and. I mean, there's so many other things you could be doing at this hour um, during this national or pardon me, global pandemic. But we are appreciative that you have um, taken your time out and spending it here with the council of Bowie and staff and uh, working on behalf of its residents. I genuinely thank you for doing that. Um, but Mr. McNeil, I want to ask you, uh, you, you quoted and I'm just from my notes and if you could correct me if I'm wrong, you indicated a return on our uh, investment of 34% if, in fact, we were to go to this, uh, th this proposal that you mentioned with the additional uh, court, or me meaning basically removal of the second sheet of ice, but bringing in a, uh, a court, pretty much. Right. Yeah. I was quoting uh some work that was done by a, a, the sports facilities advisory group and i i believe they did work for you as well okay and, um that that's kind of the uh norm okay thank thank you for that mr it McNeil. wasn't anything that i developed myself it's the norm Okay. Now, I, um, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, the council is aware, and I, I want to say this to Councilmember Boifo, uh, you asked Mr. McNeil earlier if that we would have to approve this by June um, uh, in order to move forward. Respectfully, Councilmember Boifo, this was approved last June, this project. And, um, and I want to say this to my council colleagues, is that we are continuing to to address a project that was approved by the previous council a year ago. And um, many of my colleagues, uh, Councilmember Wolfrey and Estev, 
may have some of the history. Now, it was already determined that an analysis that was conducted by staff that two sheets of ice would be generating 69%, not 34%, but 69% of profit uh, for the city. And we're currently operating at a 34% with our current um, facilities. Six, uh, and pardon me, pardon me, 68% recovery. recovery with two sheets of ice as opposed to 34%, which is being our current facility, pardon me, okay, I'm being corrected by staff. Our current facility is generating 68%. And if we were to go with two sheets of ice, we see that or greater. If we were to go with um, the proposal that Mr. McNeil lined out for us here tonight, we're only looking at a 34% return. I do understand that we do have a community which is extremely diverse, so we have to mix or meet the needs of the community. We have a community that's into ice, we have a community that's into um, um, courts and basketball. And um, if you go back and look at the tapes and the history, I was on the side of the courts and basketball, and I was advocating for that heavily. We have that coming to the community, um, courts, basketball, for pickup ball, for all of those numbers, um, numerous different sports. And we've also been able to satisfy the ICE community. Now, I understand that there are a number of residents that say they did not or were not informed of the progress or the decisions that were made. I don't know how they could not. That sign has been on Church Road, not Church Street, but Church Road for a number of years. Um, if you drive up and down there, you can see it. You know, I, I uh, want to say that if you had not those residents that haven't seen it, shame on you because you should pay more attention to your, your surroundings and knowing what's going on in your community. The city of Bowie, as well as staff, have constantly pushed this information out. It has gone out by the recreation committee, by city staff, by the ICE community, by the basketball community, by the Bowie Boys and Girls Club, by the South Bowie Boys and Girls Club. If I hear anything more about this ICE arena and this ICE plex and this project, I'll explode. So, you know, I, 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 I hear those who are saying they did not know about it. Well, shame on you if you didn't know about it because it's been processed and, and publicized every place. Now, um, the cost on the ice arena, I'm, I'm not happy about its cost, but the ice arena actually, and uh, doing its analysis, it is the only amenity, the only sport that the city of Bowie and many communities offer that's going to generate that high level of return. Basketballs, as I'm a basketball fan, I have to put, you look at it on, uh, on paper in black and white. The numbers don't add up as they do with ice. But yet we're providing that service as well. So, um, you know, hockey has become very popular. Ice has become extremely popular. As I sit here, I'm getting multiple hundreds of text messages that are coming in from residents in the city of Bowie, tax paying residents that are tired of belaboring this issue. Come on guys, we have a number of other items that we need to address. We are in a global pandemic. If, we, if you gentlemen on the council, gentlemen and ladies, wish to stop the ice arena, then let's bring it forward to a vote. Let's not play games and try and derail this and try and stopping it, bringing it to the surface. Bring it out here and say, hey, we're going to have a vote on moving forward with this project or not. Now, I'm going to be straight up and frank with you and the residents. I'm going to support this ice arena. Residents, $7.5 million of your taxpayer dollars have been spent already and additional monies have been committed. If this project stops, it will be a waste of your funds. I will not waste your money. Again, I will not waste your monies. So um, I turn it over to the mayor and other council members, and I'm gonna say this too. Trying to undo everything of the previous councils is a total waste of the taxpayer's time 
taxpayers issues Absolutely. and definitely my time I'm not going to have you all waste my time and I'm not going to do it anymore so we're going to either bring this forward or we're going to kill it so I'm, I'm done with this talking about this ice arena if anyone wants to vote on this and bring it to cancel it then by all means do that but my vote will always be firmly for the residents of the city of Bowie I will not waste your tax dollars on a private Project that has already started. I will not vote to kill it. Thank you. And uh, any other meetings about this ICE complex, for the record, I won't be here because you're going to waste my, you're wasting my time. I won't be here. Oh, I will only come on voting meetings and voting meetings only. Councilman, thank you so much for your comment. Mr. McNeil, I apologize uh, for, I know you just simply came here to to offer some ideas, and that's all we were talking about this evening. So Amen. again, I apologize for uh, 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 the delay on that. I think I, I speak for the citizens and, and the council in general, and we appreciate you, you and Park and Planning taking the time to give us some ideas about what we can do to be a little more inclusive if we choose to. Uh, as you said, this was just some ideas. Uh, for us to, to, to see and talk about, as I said before, this started before the pandemic and other things, but I, I just want to again, uh, thank you for taking your time. I apologize uh, if we've taken much more of your time than we should have. And we do appreciate you simply just trying to provide some general information for us. So uh, having said that. Hey, Mr. Uh, Mayor, make a comment. Yes, please hey, go ahead. Uh, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, Mr. McNeil, I just want to say thank you for coming in and giving this presentation. It's very helpful, especially for the new members on council who did not participate in this uh, project last year when this project was approved by the previous council. So I just want to thank you for coming in and offering us other options. I think uh, I, I think I can speak for District 4 when I say that uh, I owe it and a lot of us owe it to our community to see what other options are out there because a lot of residents are reaching out to see if we can, if there's a way that we could, you know, better service but all, all of our communities within the city of Bowie, that including like the tennis players, that including the basketball players, that, include, that includes everybody. So I think I appreciate you coming in and I just want to make sure that I say on behalf of District 4 and behalf of my community, this is a project that we were not, our newly elected officials were not involved in when it was passed. So we do owe it to ourselves and to our community who are reaching out to us every day to basically find out more information, see what those other options are, and see if there's a better way that we can go about this uh, than as opposed to just kind of rushing into something that we were not a part of. So I think that's kind of where I'm coming from, from the District 4 perspective. I don't have any questions for you on this at this time. The only thing that I would like to have a little bit more information around, and I think this is a discussion for the council particularly, is around the cost factor, because I know I've kind of made myself clear in the in the past. I don't I don't like I don't like to you know spend exuberant amounts of money or waste re um, taxpaying dollars and things of that sort. So I would just like a little bit more clarity around the finance piece in terms of the state, if you know if that's a situation where we need to kind of explore that a little further and see if the state at this time with COVID efforts would be willing to, you know, kind of increase that or fund that, then I think that would be great. Um, and then also, I just want to make sure that I, I put it out there this tonight for all the residents watching tonight during the budget hearing, we, we do have a section on COVID relief efforts. So the city is thinking about that. That is top of mind for us. It's a very important topic for all of us to make sure that. No, it's not. You're sitting here talking about that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, please don't. Run. I'm sorry. Um, again, that's a very important topic for us to make sure that we are we are meeting the community where they are in the time of a global pandemic and making sure that we're being proactive alongside of the state and the federal government. So I appreciate you coming out tonight, and that's kind of more so the, like the clarity that I'd like to see around that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, and at this time, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, would you like some additional questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just piggyback off of Councilwoman Deborah Maggi's statements. Um, I don't believe this is a waste of time. As she said, the last council put us in a place where um, this isn't a decision about if we're moving forward with the ice rink or not. 
This is a decision about if there's other options to explore. Um, so I don't think it's a waste of time to have those discussions, especially as the newly elected folks from District 3 and District 4. Uh, so, Mr. McNeil, I thank you for your time. Um, and with that, Mr. Mayor, um, I'd like to move to adjournment and move to budget work session number two. It's been moved. Second. There are second. It's been moved and properly second that we move to the budget session. All in favor, respond with an aye. 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 Thank you again, Mr. Opposed. McNeil. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, yes, give us five minutes uh, to set. Uh, motion care, move into the budget session. Thank you. Thank you. And again, thank you, Mr. McNeil. My pleasure. Five minutes to set up and then we'll start, all right? Thank you. Oh, well done. Yes, sir. Where are we at now? Are we waiting for? Uh, Mr. Lott said to give him five minutes to finish setting up and he will be right back to start. Oh, I, I couldn't see, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, then. We're ready to go. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Senior Manager. Okay, then. Uh, good evening, everybody. Let's, uh, we're going to start off with uh, page 133 of your uh, proposed budget, which is the Administration uh, Public Works Administration. All right. For the benefit of the um, residents out there in the TV land, I'll go through the description so everybody knows what goes on there. This division is the hub of the Public Works Services, written to the city and its residents under the direction of Public Works Director George Stefanos. The areas of responsibility for this department include salary waste collection, recycling, equipment maintenance, street maintenance, capital project maintenance, water filtration, wastewater treatment, and all related services of, for these divisions. This division is also responsible for the management of the mosquito control. Uh, in looking at their objectives for 2020, uh, you'll see that uh, the update to city stormwater management uh, database uh, to meet its new uh, MS4 permit, this, this objective was completed. Uh, B there is complete the screening and assessment of 60 storm drain outfalls in order to ensure no illicit stormwater uh, discharge exists. The annual screening occurs in the, in the late, um, excuse me, in late winter each year will be completed by April 20. It was already completed also. Uh, C there is established a blanket permit utility maintenance work for its in city right of way. This will significantly supply, simplify the process of administration and oversight of necessary utility work by the local utility companies. This objective uh, is completed and the blanket permit is in place. As you move, uh, forward the workload and no real significant changes to that if you go to page 134 you'll see the objectives for the new fiscal year are to create a gis map of all stormwater conveyance by the end of june 2021 
the map bullet is a requirement of the new MS4 permit. Line number two there is to improve the Public Works Department records maintenance procedures uh, to include the use of electronic file storage uh, where appropriate by June 30, 2021. Uh, we're uh, working on it. You know, we've been aut automated our, our maintenance operations the last couple of years, so we're that's another effort toward that. There is no significant change to the budget in dollars and or personnel. Uh, if you drop down to the personnel and full-time equivalents, you'll see that there's still 13.1 people in that particular uh, division of public works. And, and it's uh, people in tents, you got a million, $1.1 million in salary and wages and, and nearly $400,000 in fringe benefits. Um, if you look at page 135, you'll see a significant expense in professional services and uh, $237,000. This amount is, to, uh, is for services, soil testing, surveys, floodplain studies, engineering storage studies and, and review of plans and permits beyond the staff capability. Uh, and also we uh, do a significant amount of um, uh, main, repair and maintenance uh, in that particular, uh, look at the $28,200. Uh, before we move, are there any other questions about the administrative d division of public works? Yes, sir. Proceed. Quick, uh, two quick questions back to 133. Uh, there is a <clears throat> mention of uh, ESC permits. What is an ESC permit and why we expect so many more this year than we had last year? Uh, those are erosion and sediment control permits. Um, and um, it just, you know, just the, the, the uh, number of road sediment control permits is dependent on how much private development is occurring. So we, in fiscal 21, we um, anticipate issuing several, so. Fair enough. Okay, thank you. And then there's uh, item C, um, there is a mention here about blanket permit. Uh, what is, uh, what are our fines for failure to get a permit? Because I know that there've been at least one or two incidents where we've had some utility works and cuts in the road that were not uh, either permitted or discussed or planned with the, um, uh, with the city. Uh, do, do you know off top of, uh, of, your, of your head, uh, Mr. Stefanos, what that, uh, what that looks like in that circumstance? Not off the top of my head, but we, we can certainly get back to you on that. My, my concern is that they're not severe enough, <laughs> that, we yeah. may, uh, if, that it's not, uh, not sufficiently meaningful that it warrants uh, changing behavior. Um, yeah, so we're, we'll definitely get back to you, you know, shortly with that answer. Um, honestly, though, we, we did um, about a year ago issue a fine to Washington Gas, and uh, we've had actually um, since then a much better partnership with them. So I think things are things are improving. Yeah. So excellent, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions regarding administration? If not, then I'll move to um, page 136, which is equipment maintenance and garage. Uh, the description is very simple, one-liner. Maintaining, repairing city vehicles and equipments is the primary responsibility of this, of this operation. Um, objectives for 2020 was to populate the database with accurate historical uh, maintenance data. And uh, the new vehicle database was completed implement a laptop software for vehicle diagnosis. This is ongoing. Laptops in use, however, additional diagnostic software remain to be purchased. And, and just as a background, uh, four years ago, we weren't, we weren't automated and, and we, are, we made significant strides in that area and uh, with uh, Mr. Beal taking over. Uh, also, number C there is the optimized parts, materials, storage, and in, in the garage. And that 75% completion is gonna be done by the end of June. Uh, and, and if we can get people back to work here. Um, as you can see there, the performance measure indicators are from one year to the other are very similar. Um, one particular note that beginning in 2021, the performance indicators above will be exclusively for vehicles and equipment maintained by Public Works. Other vehicles such as police fleet are maintained 
through contract services and won't be included. Um, the objective for 2021 is to uh, shift the preventive maintenance and inspections from contract to in-house uh, uh, for, for five additional refuge vehicles in um, 20, uh, starting uh, July 2020. That'll most likely save us a few dollars. Uh, no significant budget changes there. Um, we have four people in that particular shop. And uh, of course, you always, you know, we, we do use a lot of outside contractors to help with uh, the heavy maintenance on our myriad of uh, trucks and, and equipment. Uh, this is a uh, four person operation, 370,000, 301,700 in salaries, 105,000 in fringe benefits. We spend a significant amount of money in, uh, in repair and maintenance, obviously. Uh, this this uh, funding for vehicles which are outside the, the capability of the city personnel equipment. Such items as major transmission repairs, motor replacements, differentials are included. Uh, and uh, we, we, do, we maintain our, our buildings. Uh, in, if you look at uh, 46,900 on that, on the bottom of that page. Uh, are there any questions about the equipment maintenance and garage division of public works? Uh, city manager, just a quick question. So you're saying the total number of vehicle miles driven, uh, that's gonna be a million miles that will be uh, moving elsewhere in 21? Because it's one million one hundred fifty thousand every year up until twenty one. Right, and that's uh, the the note under underneath the table talks about um, we're adjusting the performance indicators to remove the vehicles that are not maintained by the garage, which includes a police vehicle. So that's the the delta there. Yeah, it answers the question. So the delta is a million miles. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And a similar question uh, on my part. The, past, the city's passenger vehicles will basically be maintained by the garage. I, I, I couldn't hear you. Did you say that again, please? Oh, you broke up there. Certainly. The city's passenger vehicles, uh, you know, obviously the garage is taking care of maintenance vehicles such as, you know, our uh, our trucks for, you know, hauling and, uh, you know, uh, trash and things like that. But just our, our regular passenger street vehicles, is the garage maintaining that? So the, the uh, prevent, you know, regular preventive maintenance is actually done through contract. Um, the uh, r minor repairs, th those sorts of things are done by the garage for pooled vehicles, yes. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll just put a plug in for electric vehicles, if you don't mind my saying it that way. Uh, I expect that as we see more electric vehicles, you'll see less utilization of the garage. Hmm. And, and, we'll, and we'll have to figure out how to ma maintain those too, so. <laughs> There's nothing to maintain. Just plug it in and it works. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other questions regarding that particular division? If not, we'll move to uh, the solid waste division on page 139. Uh, this, the collection of uh, st and disposal of city solid waste is the division's primary responsibility. Regular weekly residential collections include household refuse twice a week, household mixed recycling, and yard waste. The division collects from residents by appointment for metal recyclables metal and tires recycling. Funds are also provided for the disposal of <clears throat> or composting of other debris generated by at the city, including the annual leaf collection and <clears throat> storm debris. If you look at the objectives, um, the, uh, the, the objective was to host one of one recycling drop-off day in Bowie. Uh, partnering with the planning, they, they uh, conducted uh, an event in January and another event was supposed to be held in April. Um, not sure that that was most likely postponed. The uh, Solid Waste Division also had scheduled a spring uh, recycling for electronics that had to be uh, postponed also due to the, the pandemic. Um, <clears throat> the objective for fiscal year 2021, develop a regular schedule of recurring recycling events for the city of Bowie residents by December 2020. Events would include paper shredding, electronics, and other recycling. I'd like to say one thing about this division as we um, 
many people mentioned the pandemic and the crisis here in Bowie. Uh, this division, with arguably the largest division, has um, really uh, come through for us and public works director and, and everybody here during this time. Uh, the employees have been very conscientious, attentive, attendance has been high, and they are very conscientious people and they're keeping us from uh, having another crisis in a crisis. And uh, you know, I want to I point that out and Mr. Moon and his team are doing really good. Uh, there are no su significant budget changes there. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, there are 55 people in our solid waste division, and that's the largest division that we have. Um, at, to that end, the, uh, the salaries and benefits uh, and wages are all nearly $3 million for, and with the million, over a million dollars for friends benefits. We also pay a significant amount of money, 1,665,000 for disposing of the waste materials, and that's in, in the businesses, they're called tipping fees. Uh, also, the repair and maintenance uh, that, that, that costs us here are, uh, in, in because we have, correct me if I'm wrong, 18 uh, trash trucks here in the city of Bowie. And um, if you look at uh, top right on page 141, operating expenses are $412,900. Primarily, most of that is for diesel fuel and other parts, uh, but mostly for diesel fuel associated with those uh, 18 trash trucks. Any uh, uh, questions regarding the Solid Waste Division and Public Works? Just a uh, quick comment, if I may. Uh, I'd like to, to thank uh, the entire team that uh, does this work. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard uh, such great complimentary things about uh, the organization and uh, the men and women who take care of, uh, uh, of all the solid waste uh, uh, removal responsibilities. It's been fantastic. The city is known for the service and uh, to the city manager's uh, uh, point earlier, thanks for being out there and doing this even in the current circumstances. So uh, please extend our gratitude uh, for, uh, for all their great work. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If there, Excellent point. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If there are no questions about that, we'll move to page 142 and review the streets uh, division. Uh, the responsibilities of this division include all street and sidewalk maintenance as well as street and traffic signs, posts, snow removal, and ice control over 192 miles of streets. Uh, the objectives for 2020 were to re replace 300 street name signs during the fiscal year, uh, and that's been an ongoing project, project uh, since 2016. That was completed. Uh, they continue the annual sidewalk repair program to address sidewalks in the worst condition. That was completed this year. Organized an inventory, street maintenance materials, stored in the lower yard, and that objective it was completed also. The performance indicators are, are of no significant change. The objectives for 2021 are to, uh, to once again, to continue the 300 street, uh, street name sign replacement, um, continue the sidewalk repair program, and address sidewalks in the worst condition, uh, implement computerized work management system for streets for crews using the uh, work order system by June 30, 2021. Um, there are no significant budget changes to this division. There are 25.7 FTEs there, and as we're obviously a people-oriented uh, operation here. Uh, we pay a million five in, in salaries, $523,000 in, in fringe benefits, and, um, and, and certainly equipment rental is one of our higher uh, expenses, and, and a lot of that 225 goes to pay uh, subcontractors to help us with the snow plowing uh, should we have a cold winter uh, in the future. Uh, again, uh, if you look at uh, page 144 at the top, there's 1,113,100 provides to use the contractors to expedite street repairs and uh, curb and gutter and such. Also, um, road striping. We pay um, well, $839,000 listed in uh, street lighting 
cleaning and relamping. Uh, and um, just below that is 1.850400. That's the same project that we discussed last week in the CIP project for street resurfacing. And this is all, uh, and those 25 people manage all of this. And of course, other uh, uses um, down at the bottom there, $164,000 for um, provided to purchase um, bituminous concrete and concrete for repairs and maintenance of streets and sidewalks. That concludes our, my, my pitch there on the streets or any questions regarding this, the streets division. All right then. Yes, quick question. Shoot. On, uh, on street lighting, uh, has there been any uh, discussion or has there been any uh, thought on a proactive effort to replace underground wires? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, yeah, yes, sir. Our, our budget request includes uh, 50,000 in that account um, that would be specifically for that. Um, we don't yet have a contract in place to do that work, but so the idea would be uh, to add that 50,000 in our operating account each year and sort of tackle um, the replacements in a priority order, you know, where we've had the most breaks. Thank you. And the next question I have on the same uh, or similar to related subject, uh, has there been any discussion about a different uh, rate for uh, uh, for LED street lights? Has there been any conversations about that at the state level by the uh, Public Utilities Commission? I'm not aware if um, I, I'm not aware if there's been any sp specific um, discussion about LED ter uh, tariffs for LED street lights. Um, there, there, there is, you know, sort of the COG and other organizations that um, are engaged on this issue, and uh, and I have been in conversation with them. They're bigger players than the city, um, and as as I as much as I know right now, there has not been any positive um, action to you know significantly lower the, those tariffs. All right, thank you, appreciate it. All right then, uh, if there are any question, other questions about the streets division, we'll talk stormwater management as it relates to the Public Works Department. That goes from 145 through 149. And um, what I'd like to talk about here is that two years ago we transferred the stormwater division to, and put them under the command and control of the Public Works. It had been at before over in the community services for some reason, but it was certainly a public works function. Um, this, this division provides stormwater facility management to the city stormwater system. Services to be provided include cleaning, mowing grass, and drainage areas, and, and also managing, help managing some contracts. The objective for 2020 is to demuck the drainage basin in Pin Oak Parkway and Hall Road by September 30, 2019. Um, we found that this project was beyond the scope of the city staff, and so we're going to use contractors um, and uh, to to conduct that in 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 in, in fiscal year 2021. B, the repair the drainage channel of River Road by December 30, 2019. The repair work was incorporated into the Saddlebrook Restoration CIP project. Work is scheduled to complete it in, be completed in fiscal year 2021. The objectives for 2021 are to establish a contract, establish contract to streamline vegetation control maintenance for all city stormwater ponds by June 30th of next year. Provide training and maintenance crews for maintenance of environmental site design, ESD, Stormwater Management Practices by June 30, 2021. Establish stormwater work order basis, base database to reflect accurate site and work performance information by uh, June 30th next year. There are no significant budget changes in this particular division. Um, 
There are 7.7 .7 full-time employees listed here. Uh, 386,000 in salary, 124,000 in friends benefits and repair and maintenance. Uh, budget is significant at 73.5 and for repair and maintenance of, of the existing stormwater management facilities, outfalls and drainage areas. If you um, move to uh, page 147, 147 through 149, there are, these, these projects are managed by special, through special, as special tax districts. And that's the Maryland Science and Technology Center, which we know as Melford. There's a thousand dollars set forth for professional services, most likely mowing primarily. The special taxing district in Bowie Town Center, uh, there is a $67,800 budget of which 57% comes from the tax district, tax district and then 43 from the city. This involves the um, replacement of uh, underground storm scepters, uh, filters, which is, it, it, it's not many of them, but it's a very expensive process. And, uh, and also, um, outfall control is what is, is the terminology I wanted to say. In, if you go to page 148, uh, that's the uh, special taxing district five, which is Highbridge, in which there's a $1,800 set, set aside, primarily for mowing and uh, cleaning the trash and removal and, and from in and around that particular stormwater uh, structure. And Special District 4, which is the Gateway Center, uh, $1,800 to set aside for mowing. And in each case there, if you look at the bottom of the write-up professional services, you'll see what percentage is this special tax district and what percentage is ours. Um, uh, number seven there is uh, the Pin Oak Special Taxing District. And there's $1,100 set aside primarily for mowing. And um, Funding for these special tax districts, Pin Elk is 18%. Uh, if you look forward, uh, um, Elder Oaks, 10, and then uh, Collins Station, 19, and general revenues pick up 53%. You go to Elder Oaks, once again, it's $1,100 set aside primarily for mowing and trash collection. And the same thing for Collins Station, 1100 for mowing and, and such. Any questions regarding the stormwater maintenance? activities. Just, just as a side note that the residents of Bowie are, are fortunate in many communities that, we're in, that I've looked, worked in, there was a special fee uh, so, uh, uh, that, was, uh, that the city's been imposed on residents up to 15 years ago, it was $30 a year for this, but this is um, one of the services that the city provides without a special fee. Byron. I'll hand over to Mr. Mr. Matthews. He'll go through the non-departmental components and uh, and more. Thank you, Mr. Lott. On page 151, the non-departmental section for the general fund, this budget section provides for expenditures which are not directly and exclusively associated with specific activities or programs. It includes debt service, consulting services, comprehensive insurance coverages, allowances for contingencies and transfers to other funds. Uh, in the summary section, we, we, we list our expenses uh, as it first relates to debt service. Uh, we have a section there for the City Hall and another section for the Bowie Iceplex. Those are the two outstanding debts that we have uh, relating to the general government side of our activities. Uh, contractual services includes um, the comprehensive insurance that the city has with uh, legit. Uh, professional services <clears throat> for $70,000 basically for actuarial costs or consultant activity. Educational, educational reimbursements for employees, 30,000. 
incentive awards on page 152, 70,000, and reserve for contingencies, 300,000. The reserve for personnel adjustments, uh, this is to award employees for performance during their normal uh, course of work. The transfers relate to transfers to the capital project fund and also the equipment acquisition fund. On page 153, we have a more detailed list of the debt service. You can see the actual um, schedule for the outstanding debt for the city of Bowie. Um, on page 154 is the uh, Ice Arena outstanding debt. And that concludes the non-departmental section. If there's any questions, I will answer them. Um, next council and mayor, we will move to page uh, 169, where we'll talk about the operating summaries of the water and sewer division. The first page gives us a little history uh, of the water and sewer division and the major uh, improvements that have been made over the years. It also um, talks about our water distribution system uh, the recapitalization of such, uh, <clears throat> which started in FY 2018. Um, citizens currently pay $22.75 per quarter. We're hoping to uh, secure an outside loan for $3.4 million uh, to offset the cost needed uh, for the pipe replacement in FY 21. Uh, the rate will increase by 5% for FY21. That's an increase of 26 cents on the water side and an increase of uh, 37 cents on the wastewater side, which equates to about $8.19 per quarter on an average household uh, generating 13,000 gallons of water consumption. On the next page, Council, page 170, we list for you a summary of the rates from FY11 through FY21. We also take this opportunity to show you that the water and sewer fund is um, self-contained and all the revenue that's generated to support it must come from the water and sewer uh, operation. On page 171, we summarize the forecast over the next six years. In FY21, we're not expecting to use any of the fund balance to fund the activities. So we're, we're hoping to generate enough revenue in addition to um, the loan for the um, water pipe replacement program. Um, and we will have um, a percentage of 46% of our fund balance uh, criteria, and that will put us in good stay there. Uh, underneath that gives you um, the forecast information from uh, FY20 through 22 to FY26. Uh, the revenue is based on 157 uh, million gallons. Uh, would have a combined increase rate of 5% from 22 through 23 and a 10% increase from 24 to 26. Minimum charge uh, will remain uh, unchanged and all other revenue is expected to increase by 5%. Uh, we talked about the uh, renewal and replacement, uh, the debt service that's in this um, schedule includes the debt service ending as of June 2019, but also includes the schedule for the uh, proposed um, loan of $3.4 million. Uh, as we move to page 172, the revenue summary, 
This shows you where the revenue in major categories and the total of 11,795,200. There's a graph below that gives you the percentage of revenue for each category. So we move to page 173. The revenue estimates is more of a delineation of the actual costs for the water sales, the sewage uh, surcharges, the minimum charges, other revenues and other financing sources. And as you can see, one of the financing sources is a bond proceed of um, 3.4 million proposed for FY21. If we move to page uh, 174, it gives a little more detail about the revenue um, that's gonna be generated by the fund. Uh, we had a few changes down in the um, claims and reimbursement area. Uh, we determined since we um, must have those meters tested uh, that it would be better to have them tested um, by a private entity. We estimated that it would cost us, uh, cost the um, resident $120 to have a meter tested. The accounting and processing fees last year uh, were $25. This is for all new accounts for customers. That's gonna be increased, proposed increase to $50. Uh, the next one is a forfeiture and discount and penalties. Our charges for late payments has been $3 uh, per late payment. That's gonna be raised to uh, $15. And return check fee, which was $25, is being increased to $45. The user, the, the uh, user security advance uh, will stay the same. Um, connection charge will stay the same and the submeter prices will stay the same. On page 175, we have a summary of the expenditures by major category, uh, billing and accounting, uh, water supplies, sewage treatment, debt service, non-departmental, and the transfer uh, for the central support services. Beneath that is a graph just to peak, depicting the percentage of each category on the whole. Uh, the next page is billing and accounting. This is the section of the finance department whose duties uh, overlap and we are responsible for doing the billing for the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, as you can see, the cost of this function is $612,600 annually. Um, the FTEs are 4.9. Uh, in our significant budget changes, we are requesting a new employee that will be split 50-50 between the general fund and my shop, the finance department, and in the billing and accounting department. Salaries and wages for the billing and accounting is $354,300. Uh, French benefits, $100,600. Our next highest um, charge there is our professional services, which includes all of our banking fees and armor car fees, um, transporting of cash. That's $93,800. And I'll... All right. Any questions of Mr. Uh, Matthews on, on building accounting or non-departmental or any of those issues he just went through? If the answers, if there yes. are, please. Yes. Was there somebody else? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't talk about it before. Hi, Councilman. Before? Thank you. Uh, I want to go back to okay. page. No, I was. Okay. I, I want to go back to page 171. 
and uh, talked about some of the assumptions here that are associated with our increase in rates for the water and sewer. This is a very sensitive for my constituents. I hear about it all the time. And it, if, if I read this correctly, we're projecting a 5% increase for this year, as well as 5% for the following year, um, and then 10% subsequent to that. Is that correct? That's correct, Councilman. So I'm, I'm at a loss as to the, uh, to the thinking behind that. When I look at the fund balance, the escalating fund balance would suggest that we're overcharging uh, with those assumptions. The escalated, the escalated fund balance is an indication of the revenue needed in order to replace the pipes throughout the city. We but don't, that, we don't. My assumption is that we're, we're doing, we're doing uh, loans for that now. Uh, uh, just, uh, it's just uh, pro. Go ahead. No, nope. I'm listening. So my assumption has been that we're doing loans for that. So the expenses associated with the pipe replacements, such as the 3.9 or whatever million dollars it is for, for this upcoming fiscal year, that we would see that in the terms of a annual uh, debt service, but not necessarily a cash on the barrel head. So I'm not sure why we need that kind of fund balance for uh, uh, for for uh, for the for the uh, water and sewer. Uh, Councilman Wolfley, I understand your concern there. Um, the water and sewer fund has had a long history of not properly capitalizing itself. Uh, there are many projects that need to be done throughout the water and sewer plant that the city just has not had the revenue to do. Um, I would think, and I'll let um, Mr. Uh, Stepanis talk about that a little more, but we have, um, we have tried to generate enough revenue not only to keep the water plant running at the high level that it must run, but also to do projects along the way. And I'm, I'm All certainly sympathetic to that. Uh, however, I'm concerned that we don't seem to have those expenditures built into the uh, prognostication, if you will, uh, for our future expenditures. Because it would seem to me that if we were planning and if we had a need for those, then we would see that in the expenditure you know, growing expenditures beyond just the recapitalization. And that that, if they were in fact built into the, the future uh, forecast, that that would keep the fund balance back down by where it is now. Uh, Councilman Wolfley, the proposed expenditures for projects in the future are included in that expenditure amount. So it is properly, Sorry. it properly depicts the cost that we uh, will incur if those projects are carried out. The main focus has been on the pipe replacement and you're correct, that's being funded by um, debt service. So you, you won't see, uh, only thing that you will see in, in the particular years, if you look in 21 and then another hit in 24, that's where the big use of the uh, debt service is happening. But you can also see the revenue that uh, is being generated during those years. Um, so, the. Uh, so though we have uh, provided for a, a steady increase in the uh, percentage, the rate, uh, the rate is only there to generate um, st stability in the program. Uh, should that rate not be needed as we come through the next budget year, um, those are adjusted. Just as last year, we did not increase the rate 
uh, on our citizens. Well, I, I think we need to go back and revisit this. This, this to me is, uh, is, is disconcerting that we have a forecast for, um, uh, for, for increasing our revenues uh, that aren't substantiated by uh, increasing expenditures. And don't misunderstand, I'm very much in favor of all of the, the replacement efforts, the, the recapitalization, and all of the much needed work that has to happen uh, to keep water flowing uh, through the pipes and then downhill as well on the way out. Um, but I'm concerned that we're uh, we're overstating the need for revenue, um, given where we are with the expenditures uh, to set that off. Mr. Wolfley, let me uh, chime in here. What, what we can do here is um, we'll uh, we'll 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 put we'll, we'll just freeze this whole component right for the moment and have um, George uh, work up the list of uh, projects that. Uh, Byron was referring to, so we can articulate those, and then also uh, have Byron calculate what the 5% uh, rate would be, increase would be in actual dollars, and how it would affect the fund balance. And then we'll come back and, and, and at that point let allow you all to make the decision of, of whether or not to install this 5% increase or you know, or not, or uh, let uh, let the fund balance absorb whatever costs there are. Very good, thank you. All right. Um, if, if I may ask a quick question. On page 175, uh, how are you looking at the difference uh, in the water supply, the big jump in the budget, could you, Express that to me one more time where we're going from the 3.4 million to the 6.7 million. Uh, yes, Mayor. That's basically showing the um, pipe replacement expenditure. That's roughly uh, 3.4 million. And that's included there, right? Right. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, then. Any other questions about uh, building and county, anything like that? If not, we'll uh, move forward to page 179 and uh, talk about the water division and later on wastewater. But just for, uh, for those who may not be familiar with, with what the utility, water utility is, there are three major components. I mean, this is the old Public Works Al coming back here. There are three components to this water system. There's the water division, and they're the guys that take it, the water from the underground aquifers, bring it up from the ground, do all the things they need to do to make it a, a clean and, and meeting all the federal standards and all that. And then there is another component in public works. There is the utility itself. These are the people who take that water and physically distribute it to the 7,800 people my daughter and grandson included, uh, and distribute that water to them. Well, once that water is consumed and, uh, and is no longer clean, it has come back through the, the sanitary sewer system that exists, and it ends up in the wastewater treatment plant, which we also operate in public, in public works. Now, when I was in Georgia, we would clean the water up and put it back in the Potomac River, uh, excuse me, the, 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 the Flint River, and uh, and, and, the, and the standards were really high, and they're the same thing here. And so that's kind of what we do in a water system. We take it out of the ground, clean it, get it ready for the distribute, and we distribute it with our utility. Do we take it back, clean it, and put it back in the production river, I believe. All right, so on page 179, this division is responsible for the production and purification of water supply for the city which meets and or exceeds all state and federal standards. The water is fluorinated for health purposes and the iron is removed by filtration, flocculation, aeration, and sediment, sedimentation process. A lot of big words there. The cost of maintaining this water system, distribution system, water distribution is included in, the, in this particular division. 
The objective for 2020 were to complete the assessment of water treatment system, develop short and long-term plant maintenance and improvement plans. The water plant uh, needs an assessment has been completed. The long-range capital improvement plans have been developed and based on the priority of, of, of assessed need. B there, the implement automatic control and monitoring of plant processes and operation. That project was complete. Exercise the water distribution system interconnections with WSSC to ensure the patterns of the water uh, for water emergency. Two of the uh, WSSC's interconnections at East Haven and Millstream will be completed by the end of fiscal year 2020. Look, if you look at the performance workloads, there's not much of a change other than we repaired uh, fewer pipe, more, we projected to repair more pipes than we did last year. And um, the objectives for 2021 are four significant things that they plan to get done. It's to improve the work planning, records management, and information tracking through acquiring and utilizing advanced technologies to achieve better process efficiency by June 30, 20, next year. Fully incorporate computerized maintenance and, ma and management system, call, otherwise called CMMS, to plan, schedule, track, and maintain routine and corrected maintenance work for the plan by 20, uh, 30th of June next year. Establish cross-connection program implementation plan by June the 30th of uh, 2021. And exercise the water distribution system interconnections with WSSC to ensure preparedness for water emergencies by June the 30th of next year. If we go to the next page, there are significant budget changes in here, but what basically what it equals to is moving of people from one division to another. There are no new FTEs here. Um, the new classification of a, uh, of a maintenance manager, a 0.5 FTE grade 114 at a cost of 43, 780, transfer of utility supervisors from the water, waste water plant to the water plant at grade 112 at a cost of 84,733 and transfer of utility service worker, a 0.5 FTA grade 105 from wastewater plant to the water plant for cost of uh, 24,935. Uh, <clears throat> so as you can see down here, we go from 12.8 FTEs to 14.8 by the movement of those people. Uh, you'll see where things balance out in the next um, division. Salaries and wages are a million forty thousand. Fringe benefits are three hundred sixty-two thousand seven hundred. Significant expenses include the public utilities, which is the purchase of gas, electricity, uh, telephone services, miss utility services. Of course, of course, you have to call miss utility before you do any significant digging. Uh, repair and maintenance of the, of, of the physical plant itself. Uh, $105,000. Materials uh, at 139400 Small valves, piping, wiring tools, um, include hydrant replacement parts, uh, and um, uh, those were installed by city employees and water meters and, and fire hydrant replacement. Um, further down here, and I'll let George uh, talk through this one, this is the capital outlay, which is improvement on, on the improvement on the buildings, four four million five hundred thousand. George, will you explain to them what that number is, please? Uh, so that, uh, sorry, give me one second here. Um, so that uh, that. Uh, those funds include several projects. The main, the biggest project is the um, distribution system recap, our first uh, big phase, which is 3.4 million. It includes $275,000 towards uh, the meter replacement project. It includes uh, $740,000 uh, for the uh, recoding of the media lane storage tank, which is a 3 million gallon uh, water storage tank. Um, it includes um, a twenty thousand dollars towards additional uh, automation at the water plant, and uh, fifty thousand dollars towards a um, 
uh, electrical upgrade at our uh, pump and, and a pumping system at the water plant. Are there any questions about the water division? No. Yeah, I've got a quick question for you. Uh, back on page 179, uh, item C, uh, I see that we've got interconnections that we're working on here, which is great. Uh, very much in favor of the emergency planning aspect of that. Uh, the question I have is, what rates do we charge or what rates do we pay if we use WSSC's water or if they use ours. So um, because the interconnects were constructed at different times, each one uh, actually has a different agreement associated with it. So I don't have an easy answer for you. Um, the newest uh, interconnect at Heather Hills has a fairly complicated equation where we calculate the normal use uh, in the 330 homes in Heather Hills and then, you know, come up with some time clock of how long we had the interconnect open. Um, and then uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head, with, but we can, we can get you an answer back on that question. So the, each one is covered by um, an MOU between the city and WSSC. Excellent, thank you. I look forward to it. Should be a great reading. Okay, then. Any other questions about uh, the water division? If not, we'll uh, proceed to the wastewater division. Uh, this division is responsible for the collection and treatment of raw sewage. This sewage is treated and, and returned to the Patuxen River in full compliance with the state and EPA permit standards. The cost of maintaining the sewer collection system is included in this division. Uh, the objectives for 2020 were to implement preventive measures to ensure reliable operating conditions at sewer pump stations and provide bypass solutions to ease potential interruptions in, in pump sta station operations. The sewer pump station number one repair is complete. Improve cost B is to improve the cost effectiveness of sludge disposal by, by reducing wet weather impact on lime stabilized sludge stored on the plant site. An evaluation concluded that the payback for a sludge roof is limited, so the, so the capital project for this objective has been postponed and we're hauling the sludge off in a standard fashion. Um, moving to uh, the objective for 2021, to uh, fully incorporate computerized maintenance and, ma and management system, CMMS, to plan schedule, track, maintain, routine, and corrected maintenance work for the plant by June 30, 2021. Number two there is improve, improve work planning, records maintenance, and information tracking through acquiring and utilizing advanced technologies to achieve better process efficiencies by June of next year. Earlier, we, there were some people moved around, and here's where this is all balanced out. The significant changes are a new classification of a maintenance manager of 0.5 FTA grade 114 and a cost of 43,779. Transfer of a utility supervisor from waste water plant to the water plant, one grade 112 at a cost of 84,733. Uh, transfer uh, of utility service worker at 0.5 FTA grade 105 from wastewater plant to water plant at a cost of 24,935. The new wastewater maintenance worker uh, by 1.0 FTE, grade 105, at a cost of 48,029 dollars. Um, if you'll um, look to the right on page 183, you'll see that there is a reduction uh, of two FTEs from 18.6 to 16.6, which from an equation on algebraic perspective, one cancels out the other. Uh, th this is a, a, a million dollar, one million one eighty three in salaries and wages, four and twelve thousand dollars in fringe benefits, and um, contractual service, con consulting service for sludge, mon sludge monitoring, engineering service are required for maintenance for improvements. 
This also includes sewer system foam injections to retard free growth. Um, on page 184, you'll see that we have a significant charge for electricity and telephone costs as well as cost for missed utilities to the tune of $293,000. Uh, and then as George mentioned here, there, there's a capital outlay of 425 for the implement the SCADA system plan operations, pump replacements at sewer pump station eight, sewer lateral replacement program, sewer lateral replacement inline monitoring probes, electrical upgrades, including the SWGR fee protection. So also we, we are machinery and equipment, since we're have that heavily dependent on that, that's one of the costs we have. Any questions regarding the wastewater treatment uh, operation? Byron, would you? Yeah, uh, a quick question. Shoot. Sure. Yes. Can you tell me what the uh, the sewer lateral replacement program is? Is that for just our particular laterals, or is that for uh, residential? So that uh, program it uh, addresses the city-owned part of the residential sewer house connection. So the pipe that runs from the house to the city-owned collection main uh, is typically owned mostly by the resident up to the right-of-way. And then once it gets into the street, actually in Bowie, it's to the curb. And then once it's in the street, the city owns that rest of that piece. So we have um, a kind of a known list of problematic um, houses that we're sort of marching through with that money. And so that money goes towards the city piece of that lateral. It does not address any of the private part of that lateral. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, regarding the wastewater? If not, Byron, take the Mayor and Council, I'll be starting on page 185 with the non-departmental cost in this section. Uh, again, this budget um, section provides for expenditures which are not directly or exclusively associated with specific activities or divisions. It includes debt service, comprehensive insurance coverage, uh, allowances for contingencies and transfers to other funds. Um, the expenditure section is just a summary of those components, debt service, contractual service, other charges, and the transfer. As you can see in the debt service, we are still paying on our enhanced nutrient removal upgrade. The next one is the pipe replacement. Uh, our next loan is the water and wastewater plant improvements. And the last one is the water plant improvements. Um, I, I want to remind council at this particular time that uh, three components of these loans were uh, generated because the water and sewer fund didn't have enough cash in its fund balance to handle the improvements. And the city has a, a, a policy to use PAYGO as much as it possibly can. Uh, with the dynamics of water and sewer, we took the option of showing some financing from loans or bond proceeds. However, when we get to the point of actually executing this, that money may in fact come from the PAYGO versus actually uh, getting a loan. So our first uh, ideal is to always do PAYGO, and second is loans. Um, the contractual services that deals with the uh, property and casualty insurance, other charges, incentive awards. This section is pretty much uh, mirrors the general fund section for its expenditures. And the last component is the um, transfer to the general fund for the support uh, for the uh, water and sewer. Uh, it includes the computer networking, any rental facilities, maintenances, and other charges that um, are incurred. On page 187, uh, deals with a, a, a larger picture of the debt service requirements and the actual schedule for each debt, excluding the uh, 
pipe replacement schedule. We won't uh, show a schedule until we actually execute the loan. I'll pass the last page off to uh, Public Works Director. So in fiscal 188, it addresses the equipment replacement in uh, the water and sewer uh, divisions. And in fiscal 21, we do have um, one uh, aged uh, dump truck that's used by our utilities group that uh, needs to be replaced. That's the first item on the list. The cargo van is actually to support that new maintenance manager position that will service both the water plant and the wastewater plant. Uh, so that that's what that van will be used for that's a that'll be an addition to our fleet um and then at the second section under equipment you see two uh, uh the first two items are scheduled for fy21 the first item is this uh, uh push camera which is um a new piece of equipment um uh, needed to, um, we, we don't really have the right tool right now to look into some sewers. So this will help us examine those sewers. And then the sewer cleaning uh, kit is actually an addition to our, um, our camera truck. It, uh, it will add some capability that will help us uh, clean sewers more easily. If there are any questions about George's uh, uh, discussion of equipment, we'll move to page 278 and, uh, this, and have discussed the CIP projects that are specifically related to the water system. On page 278, uh, there is a, uh, a water plant uh, CIP uh, project, uh, $175,000. This project provides for improvements, recapitalization, and major repairs to the city's water production, storage, distribution, infrastructure, including water filtration plant, water well storage tanks, and uh, distributing piping and valves. If you look to page 279 and you look at the project summary, cost summary, you'll see that uh, this 175 is, uh, as, is proposed, uh, low lift pump rehab, sediment electric control, uh, $50,000, filter gallery concrete repair, $70,000, WTP skater implementation, $20,000, hatch ladders improvement, $25,000, inline monitoring, $10,000. Uh, and uh, the impact on operating budget, these improved, uh, improvements serve to maintain and prolong the utility and its existing plants. Any questions regarding that particular CIP project? Quick question on uh, out years for 2022. To, uh, explain to me what's going on with the 197 crossing relocations. So the money you see there is um, would be uh, design fees that we would um, pay to um, State Highway to design, uh, you know, the relocation of utilities. Uh, city utilities, both water and sewer, that have to be relocated due to the widening of 197, you know, along that stretch by Long Ridge. If that ever happens. So, if it, if it ever happens, okay. Right. So then on top of that, we'll actually have to pay to relocate, correct? Yes, we will. Um, Any, uh, that is, because uh, that uh, is uh, in, the, in the beyond, I, I, I can't remember what we, um, showed for that. I, it was a significant amount. I think um, I'll have to get back to you on that. I can't remember what the, the relocation cost is off the top of my head. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right, then. Um, moving to page 280, uh, there's a repainting of the storage uh, water storage tanks and seven hundred forty thousand dollars set aside for that. Um, if you look to the project cost summary and uh, 2021, that's the median lane, media lane tank repainting and repair constructions. So um, this involves um, 
Three city storage tanks, the interior and, and exterior of the tanks require periodic repainting, and it's our, we're gonna do that with, with that fund. Any uh, questions or about that? If not, go to page 282, the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, this project is funded to the tune of $425,000 for 21. This project provides major building renovations and improvements to the wastewater treatment plant. If you look at the cost, project summary cost, uh, you'll see that uh, the WWTP skater implementation, $65,000. Pump replacement at pumping station eight uh, is uh, $200,000. Sewer lateral replacement, 80,000. Inline monitoring probes, 30,000. Electrical upgrade, including SWGR fee protections, is $50,000. These improvements also help maintain the utility and keep it as a viable entity. Are there any questions about the wastewater treatment plant project, uh, CIP project? I'll move to um, page 284, which is the water distribution system recapitalization that we've been talking about, uh, spoken about several times already. The city of Boo operates a public utility that serves approximately 7,900 customers. The water distribution piping suffers from significant corrosion that has caused a degradation of the water quality and in some cases, reduce uh, flow rates. Water meters need to be updated to simplify meter readings and improve the meter accuracy. And um, in addition, the project will replace all water service meters and modern, with modern meters to simplify the, the situation. If you looked uh, to the project cost summary, you'll see a, uh, a major expenditure that Byron mentioned and, you, and what we've been talking about and the construction and inspection of maintenance and management services for first two mile pipe replacement and lining project phase one, three million four hundred thousand dollars. Construction span spans from 2021 to 2023. Meter replacement years five and seven, two hundred seventy five thousand dollars and hydraulic modeling to the tune of uh, five thousand dollars. Any questions regarding that particular project? Yes. Um, question uh, relates to the comparison between the work that's being done for the next fiscal year uh, and that that is or has been completed with Heather Hills. I see that we have uh, a mere four hundred eighty thousand dollars for that project. How's that? differ and compared to what we're gonna be spending and uh, accomplishing for 2021. Uh, uh, if I could take one second, cause I'm gonna ask, uh, I wanna introduce you first to our assistant director, Dr. Hong Yin. I'm gonna ask her to answer the question. And uh, for those of you who have not had a chance to meet uh, Dr. Yin, she's been with us for a couple years now and has brought to the city uh, quite a, a uh, a depth of experience and knowledge um, in the wastewater and water business. Um, and she's been on uh, the Microsoft Teams meeting uh, through the meeting and hopefully um, she can respond to that question right now. Hung, are you available? Uh, yes. So the Heather Health water main replacement uh, has been completed, uh, I think, in November last year, and the project cost 480,000 is for 2,200 linear feet. And currently what we're doing, um, proposing to do, uh, to construct, construct in FY21 is the remaining uh, pipeline in Heather Hill section, which are total 2.8 miles. That's why the uh, estimated construction cost will be um, 3.4 million. Um, and uh, also, yes. I think that's it. Thanks, Hong. Yes. So the original, the, the $480,000, I'm sorry, how many feet? 2,200. Okay. 
expensive business. Yeah, and then also that uh, we are actually planning to use different construction methods. So for the, uh, for the small 2200, uh, we use pipe bursting, and currently we are um, doing the design for the phase two, uh, phase one, the first 2.8 uh, mile of uh, piping for the remaining Heather Hill section. The proposed method are uh, also you know, uh, innovative pipelining. Structural lining. I'm sorry, you were breaking up there. You're saying there's what's the new method? Structural lining method. So instead uh, that you know minimize uh, disruption, um, the, uh, structural lining will be lined inside of the pipe without having to uh, excavate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, if there aren't any other any other questions, that concludes the work that we scheduled to have done to, this tonight. I know that um, uh, Councilwoman Indivimado wanted to have a discussion of the of the fund balance, and uh, and and uh, so I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Matthews to tell her to give give you all a quick briefing on what the fund balance is currently. I apologize. Before, I'm so sorry. Before we jump into the fund balance, uh, can I just make one comment to Mr. Stefanos uh, regarding public works, Mr. Mayor? Yes, go right ahead. I appreciate that. Um, uh, George, two quick things. One, um, I say this every year. I will say it again. Your department continues to be one of the finest as far as public feedback that we get. Um, we really appreciate the work that you continue to do. Um, one quick comment is I've gotten a smattering of comments um, from residents across my district about just making sure um, that when trash and recycling is being picked up, um, that the folks are doing that are just taking care to make sure that things get fully emptied out. I realize they're not reaching deep into the trash cans to empty things, but just to take a little uh, care with that. Otherwise, the feedback we get is really very extremely positive, and I'm really grateful for your continued work on that front. Uh, the only other thing is I would really encourage us um, to double down on communication as it relates to the water and sewer fund and to the rate increases. Um, there's a, a massive deficit of knowledge about what's going on with the city's water and sewer system, um, you know, our plan to replace pipes and why rates are going up. And so if we could just work with Una Cooper a little bit on improving communication around that one issue, that will go a really long way to helping us in the long term. And um, other than that, I appreciate everything, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Got it. Good evening again, Mayor and Council. I was asked to um, bring to you some information on the fund balance. And as you know, um, the state, the city, and the country, the world, is affected by the uh, COVID-19 virus. And it has had a uh, devastating effect on uh, state and city and county revenues, as well as expenditures. Um, I, I heard the, the, the term rainy day fund. The city really doesn't have a rainy day fund we have a unassigned fund balance. And what that means is funds that are available at the discretion of council to use as they so please. At the end of um, our last fiscal year, our audit, uh, our fund balance was 40,360,139.25. Of that, the unassigned balance is $26,854,282. Over the last few days, uh, I've tried to look at the impact of COVID on our revenues and expenditures. And I projected that our revenues as of June 30th 
2020 will come in at about 5.2 million. Our projected expenditures for the same period will be about 54 million, which will give us a change in the fund balance of about 2.2 million uh, deficit. So as we're moving forward, looking, looking at the, uh, the fund balance, the fund balance would be 300, will be 38,001, 38 million, I'm sorry, thank you, Al. 38 million, 181,760 dollars. And just one other, one small comment. Normally the, the rainy day fund is a subset of the unassigned fund balance. And it is normally used there to offset uh, budget shortfalls. Um, but again, from the city's perspective, we've just used that unassigned fund balance as the catch-all for all of those available funds that are available to council at their discretion without any commitments or assignments or any restrictions. Well, thank you, Byron. Mr. Matthews, a quick Any question for you. The um, unassigned balance, um, actually two quick questions. The unassigned balance, what is the target city? Twenty five percent, uh, Councilman. Which would put us at what dollar value? Uh, hold on for one second. Uh, about 13.5 of expenses. Okay. Uh, the next question I have is the, um, what are the, the biggest categories for the assigned portions of the fund balance? Is that our pay-go funding? The, the biggest portion of the assigned funding is the use of the appropriated fund balance to balance the budget. No, I'm sorry, the, the difference between the 40 million and the 26 million. Yes, all those, well, let, I can do the math very quickly. I don't have that laid out. Sorry. Should be about 14 million. 13.5 million. And, and that is assigned, that's the assigned fund balance, right? And that's no. assigned to things such as our pay-go funds, is that correct? The number that I get, just gave you was the uh, unrestricted, the unexpended, the committed, and the assigned, those four categories. The assigned, Thank you. that portion of the assigned is 6.2 million of that there's about 5.9 million used for fund balance appropriation. Thank you. Okay. Well, there are a couple of other point I'd like to make is uh, it, it, when, when Governor Hogan gave, issued the, um, the stay at home order, uh, of course we had to, uh, we had to, because of our union agreements and, and policies, we have to pay the essential employees uh, at a higher rate. And that's costing us about approximately $400,000 per pay period, more than we plan to spend. So, of course, we're going to endeavor vigorously after this is over to get our money back. But we, you know, we're, we still have to pay that money out, and there's no guarantees of that, the way things are working. But uh, especially considering the, the state 
state, the state of affairs with Maryland in that a good portion of their revenue comes from sales tax and nobody's buying anything right now. And, uh, and no income taxes and, and, and that, that might affect the federal government even though the federal feds do get to print their own money. Um, uh, we don't know the state of Maryland, but so just keep in mind that to get us to the end of May, in this current state, you know, stay at home quarantine, it's going to cost us two million dollars more in pay that we that we plan to spend. Uh, hopefully, we'll we'll lift that and we'll be in better shape. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for our city manager and end of staff? All right, well, thank you. Anybody else, any questions? If not, city manager, city staff, thank you so very much. Council members, thank you so very much. Good night, thank sir. You. Good evening. Thank you. We got a lot of work done tonight. Good. We got the, the big, got one more big department coming up next Monday. All right. Again, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mr. Wolfie, you look like you're losing a little weight there. You get enough food in, while you're teleworking? I'm just, I mean, your face is getting lean. I'm impressed. Huh? Uh, well, anything I can do, tell the missus. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe it's the food or you're working in the yard more. I don't know, but looking, looking.